That's Biffo's feet up there, brother. His shiny, bulbous feet. His shiny, bulbous feet. Hope you are all doing well. I'm back. I'm back. I, uh, oh boy, it was, it was a rough couple of weeks there. A rough couple of weeks. My neck was all, all massively jacked up, massively jacked up, and I had, uh, I had stuff going on uh, in my life that was that was unpleasant. But uh, hopefully that is. Things have settled down enough. We can get back into doing streams and such again. You may notice there's a little counter down get here for Biffo around, bits. So you don't get bongo neck. You don't get bongo. Oh, that's right. We gotta get up and move around. For every one thousand Biffo bits, chubbo dance, chubbo floss, chubbo dance. we will get to enjoy an episode of Biffo okay, the Bear's nice. YouTube channel. Biffo's Retro Reviews. I've got a whole bunch of them made up. They are... They are neural network generated Biffo the Bear YouTube videos from his Biffo's Retro Reviews channel. And I fed my, uh, my Biffo voice into an AI to do uh, Biffo text-to-speech. Oh, there we go. We've this hit a thousand a already. I didn't ask for a sub. I didn't Shall ask for a sub. Once all these go through, we'll, uh, actually I can, we'll do one for free and then we'll do the one for a thousand. We'll do the very first one here. Let me turn up the volume a bit and then we got a comic to look at. Hello everyone. It's now we are so happy we did the bear. Bear. There we go. And Let me start over. Here we go. Let me turn it up a bit more. Here we go. This was the very first one I did here. Hello everyone. It's me, Biffo the Bear, and welcome to another episode of Biffo's Retro Review. Today I'm going to review a classic game for the Zex Spectrum. Jet Set Will, oh, this game was released in 1984 by Software Projects and it's a sequel to the popular Manic Miner. In this game, you play as Willy, a millionaire miner who has to tidy up his mansion after a wild party. You have to explore 60 rooms full of hazards and enemies, such as killer penguins, flying toilets, and evil clowns. Sounds fun, right? Well, not really. This game is hard, very hard. In fact, it's so hard that it's almost impossible to complete. The game is full of bugs and glitches that make it frustrating and unfair. For example, some rooms have invisible walls that block your way. Some enemies move randomly and unpredictably, and some items are placed in unreachable places. The worst part is that you have a limited number of lives and no save option. If you die, you have to start all over again from the beginning. That's right, no checkpoints, no passwords, no mercy. This game will make you cry, scream and throw your spectrum out of the window. But don't worry, I'm here to help you. In this video, I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks to beat this game and get the best ending possible. Yes, there is an ending, and it's worth seeing, trust me. So sit back, relax, Folks, and enjoy Jet Set Willy with yeah, Biffo I am. the Bear. I'm here. Hello. I heard you, Randy so Brown. there we go. That was, that was the very first episode I made. You stood here on television in front of all these folks, and you said that I was And yeah, that it is, it is well, the same TTS engine that Unlimited Steam used. Unfortunately, Unlimited Steam you got permanently try, banned, so we will, we will so no longer get to enjoy the more. antics, you, the brother, antics of right Skinner ring, and one. Chalmers. Now let's go to the ring. Okay, now we can we do another one, one now, because we hit a thousand go. bits. Hype train hey. success, we've collected all the level five emotes. Hey, hey, hey. 
Here we go. Let's do another one. Hello, chums. It's me, Biffo the Bear, and welcome to another episode of Biffo's Retro Reviews. Today, I'm going to take a look at one of the most iconic games for the Zek Spectrum, Jet Set Willy. This game was released in 1984 by Software Projects, and it was a sequel to Manic Miner. In this game, you play as Willy, a millionaire miner who has to tidy up his mansion after a wild party. Years, Sounds which is easy, converted into right? 48 before Wrong. Years. The 48 mansion before is years. full of deadly hazards such as killer penguins, flying uh -oh. toilets. And... We'll put Biffo on hold for a second while this, while this passes. Had that repressed for quite a while. You have to explore over 60 rooms and collect all the items before you can go to bed. The game is famous for its colorful graphics, catchy music, and fiendish difficulty. It's also notorious for having several bugs that made it impossible to complete without cheating. But don't worry, chums. I have a special cheat code that will let me finish the game in no time. All I have to do is type in poke 600, 3000, 350 and press enter. This will make Willy invincible and able to walk through walls. Let's see how it works. Oh dear, it seems that the cheat code has backfired. Instead of making Willy invincible, it has turned him into a giant duck. And now he can't fit through any of the doors. Quack, quack, quack. Well, this is a fine mess I've gotten myself into. How will I ever get out of this one? Tune in next time, chums, to find out if I can escape from Jet Set Willie's mattress as a duck. Until then, keep on doing it and stay retro. Whoa! Yay! Excellent. So yeah, for every one thousand Biffo bits, we will we will get to listen to one episode of Biffo's Retro Reviews, his YouTube channel. But yeah, it's comic time. Let's get our comic music going. Let's see, where did we leave off on Sonic the Comic? Have we read this one? We haven't read this one. Yeah, it's this one. Hair! Hair! Oh, that reminds me. I've got, uh... I've got an episode I haven't added to the playlist. We, uh, find that here. Yeah, there we go. Let's put that in the playlist. For Biffo's Retro Reviews Gaming Recipes. Let's just put that in here. Do I have this one? Yes, okay. Alright, here we go. Sonic the Comic Free Eraser! Starring Sonic the Hedgehog. This is the free eraser right here. New Sonic Story Project Brutus. Brutusk. 
Short Fuse, the Badnik Busters back. News story. Sonic Here's Eraser here, missing? Alert your news agent now. That's what he called himself, Destruction Unlimited. Destruction Unlimited. I'm never gonna get back up. No one's ever done that. Oh yeah, I tried making a, uh, a Jumpin' Jeff Farmer. AI TTS voice, but he ended up becoming incredibly, incredibly cursed. The Control Zone! With the Megadroid Mark II. Hey, boomers! My hands are in need of an oil now. That so many of you are sending email letters to STC, it makes a change from opening envelopes. For those of you who prefer more traditional methods, you should now, you should by now be proud owners of the cover mounted free cool Sonic Eraser, which is used to erase Sonic. Once you've stopped admiring it, check out what lies ahead in this issue. Oh! oh, oh. We get another, another Biffo's retro reviews to enjoy. Now it's my turn. Yeah, let's do that again. Here we go. Oh. No, never mind. Wait for Inspector Gadget to get his spiel Rick, out of the way please. first. Don't you have a cello? Oh no! What's this wire for? You know? Let's listen to this one since we're talking about Sonic. King Hippo, let's see if you can live this. John. Uh, it's me. Uh, no sweat. Hello, Chum. It's me, Pippo the Bear, and welcome to another episode of Pippo's Retro Reviews. Today, I'm going to show you some amazing and tips and cheats for one of my favorite games of all time, for every opponent that gets Sonic in the, the Hedgehog 2. Trust me, you these are 100 legit and no will I'm make you a master of this classic platformer. Tip number one, if you want to play as out. Tails instead of Sonic, just now press up. Up, down, down, left, right. Left, right, left, right, B, uh, start at the title screen. This will unlock a secret menu where you can select Tails as your character. He can fly and swim and do all sorts of cool things that Sonic can. Plus, he's much cuter and has a better voice. Tip number two. If you want to skip any level in the game, just pause Ladies the game and, and press uh, B last two long years This will take over. you to a debug mode a long, long where way. you can move going around down the screen this time, with the D-pad and down. place any object you we'll want. Back. You can also press C again to this change your character Bill into a room Randy or a monitor or Brian anything else. Bill Just Bill be careful not to mess up the game too much or it might crash. Tip number three, if you want to get infinite lives and rings, just when go to the Casino place, Night Zone down. and find a slot machine, then jump on it and keep pressing A as fast as you can. You will get tons of rings and extra lives every time. You can also use this trick to get super speed shoes and invincibility. Just don't get too greedy or the slot machine might explode. Oh, man. <laughs> Tip number four. If you want to see a secret Scientist ending where Sonic and Tails kiss and get married, by just collect all the Chaos Emeralds with a 3D and beat the printer. final boss without losing any rings. Single sound. Then wait for the credits to roll and press at B and C at the same time. You will see a cutscene where Sonic and Tails confess their love for each other and exchange vows. It's very romantic and heartwarming. Tip number five. If you want to play a hidden minigame where you can control Dr. Robotnik and destroy Sonic and Tails with your giant robot, just turn off your console and then turn it on again while holding down A, B, and C. You will hear a special sound effect, and then the game will start with Robotnik's theme playing. You can use the D-pad to move your robot and press A to fire missiles, B to drop bombs, and C2 use your laser. It's very fun and satisfying. And that's it for today's it's episode of Biffo's It's very fun Special and Review. satisfying. I hope you enjoyed these tips and cheats for Sonic the Hedgehog 2. 
Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more awesome content from me, Biffle the Bear. See you next time. See you next time. Oh, we get to do one more. We get to do one more. Oh, man, we get to do two more. Here we go. Hello, chums, Chubbo Biffo. Hello, chums. See, how many of these do I have made? Let me count how many of these I have made. Uh... Oh, there's Carlos. He's stopping by to check out Biffo's retro reviews, too. I have... 182 of them. I have 82 of them made. 82 made. Alright. What do we get next? Hello, chums! Welcome to another episode of Biffo's Retro Reviews, where I play the most obscure and ridiculous games from the past. Today, I'm going to review some games based on Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. You know, the big guy with the muscles and the accent. Let's see how he fares in the world of pixels and polygons. First up, we have Terminator 2, Judgment Day for the Zek Spectre. This game is a faithful adaptation of the movie, except for one minor detail. You play as the T-1000, the liquid metal villain. Your goal is to chase and kill John Connor, who is constantly running away from you on a motorbike. The problem is, you can only move in four directions. Up, down, left, and right. And you can only shape, shift into two things. A policeman or a puddle. The graphics are so bad that you can barely tell the difference. The sound effects are even worse. Every time you move, you make a loud blip noise that alerts John to your presence. The game is impossible to win unless you somehow corner John in a dead end. But even then, he can just jump over you and escape. This game is a waste of time and tape. I give it a 1 out of 10. Next, we have Predator, the musical for the Commodore 64. This game is a bizarre mix of action and singing. You play as Dutch, the leader of an elite commando team sent to rescue hostages from a jungle. Along the way, you encounter the Predator, an alien hunter who wants to kill you for sport. The game alternates between shooting segments and musical segments. In the shooting segments, you have to blast your way through enemy soldiers and avoid the Predator's traps. In the musical segments, you have to sing along with your teammates and the Predator using a microphone. The songs are based on famous tunes from Broadway shows, but with lyrics changed to fit the plot. For example, there's a song called I Dreamed a Dream where Dutch laments his fate and wishes he was back home with his wife. There's also a song called Do You Hear the People Sing? where the Predator taunts Dutch and his men with his distorted voice. <laughs> the game is hilarious and absurd, but also very hard. The shooting segments are fast and furious, and the musical segments require perfect timing and pitch. If you miss a note or a beat, you lose health and ammo. The game ends with a final showdown between Dutch and the Predator, where you have to sing one day more from Less Miserables while throwing grenades and firing rockets. Less this game miserable. is a masterpiece of madness. I give it a 9 out of 10. Finally, we have Kindergarten Cop, the RPG for the Nintendo Entertainment System. This game is a role playing game where you play as Detective John Kimball, who goes undercover as a kindergarten teacher to catch a drug lord. The game has two modes, school mode and investigation mode. In school mode, you have to teach your class of five-year-olds various subjects such as math, science, art, and history. You also have to deal with their problems and personalities such as allergies, tantrums, crushes, and secret. You can interact with them using dialogue options and mini games. In investigation mode, you have to search for clues and evidence about the drug lord's whereabouts and identity. You can explore the school and the town using an overhead map and talk to various characters such as other teachers, parents, and suspects. 
You can also use your police skills such as interrogation, surveillance, and combat to get information or fight enemies. The game is complex and engaging, but also very funny and charming. And the kids Randy are adorable Bright. and hilarious, years, and Kimball's reactions over. to them are priceless. Long, long the game way. also has going many references and time, jokes Bill. from the movie, such as Kimball's catchphrase, it's not a we'll tumor, or his terrible Arnold impression this when he pretends to be an Austrian farmer. The game is a joy to play from start to finish. I give it a 10 out of 10. Well, that's all for today's episode of Biffo's Retro Reviews. I hope you enjoyed this trip down memory lane with Arnold Schwarzenegger games. Until next time, chums, stay retro. All right, and we get one more. We get one more. What one will we get next? Hello, chums. Welcome to Biffo's Retro Review, where I play the most terrifying games ever made. Today, I'm going to show you three games that will make you scream in fear and laugh in disbelief. The first game is called The Haunted Hairdryer. It was released for the Commodore 64 in 1987. The premise is simple. You are a hairdresser who has to cut the hair of various customers. But your hairdryer is possessed by a demon and tries to kill you and your clients. The graphics are awful. The sound effects are annoying and the gameplay is frustrating. You have to dodge the hairdryer's attacks while trying to finish your job before the timer runs out. If you fail, you get a game over screen that shows your hairdryer laughing maniacally and your customer's head on fire. It's not scary at all, it's just stupid. The second game is called Nightmare on Sesame Street. It was released for the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1990. It's a parody of the famous horror movie franchise, but with Sesame Street characters. Sesame you play as Elmo, who has to survive a night in his apartment while being hunted by Freddy Krueger, who looks like a Muppet with knives for fingers. The game is full of cheap jump scares and references to the movies, but they don't make any sense. For example, at one point you have to fight Freddy in a dream where he turns into a giant cookie monster and tries to eat you. It's not scary at all. It's just silly. The third game is called Dracula's Dentist. It was released for the Sega Genesis in 1992. It's a puzzle game where you have to fix Dracula's teeth before he wakes up and bites you. The game is very hard and requires precise timing and accuracy. You have to use various tools like pliers, drills, and hammers to remove Dracula's rotten teeth and replace them with new ones. The game is full of gore and blood, and Dracula makes horrible noises when you hurt him. It's not scary at all, it's just gross. Well, chum, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Biffo's Retro Reviews. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And remember, don't let these games give you nightmares. See you next time. Hello, chums. There we go. It's me, Biffo the Bear. Oh, and Biffo, you, you don't need to do another one. There we go. There we go. I've got, I've got 82 episodes of Biffo's retro reviews made. Yeah, I can't give away the good stuff for free. 82. Oh man. Yes, remember, every 1,000 Biffo bits, we get to listen to an episode of Biffo's Retro Reviews. So let's get up and move around for a little bit with our our little chum here. Ooh.
There we go. Today's special. Today's special is trash. Trash. Okay, control zone. Hey, boomers, my hands are in need of an oil. Now that so many of you are sending email letters to STC, ah, it makes a change from opening envelopes. For those of you who prefer more traditional methods, you should by now be proud owners of the cover-mounted free cool sonic eraser. Once you've stopped admiring it, check out what lies ahead in this issue. Robotnik comes up with another hair-brained scheme in the Sonic story, Project Brutus. Underwater adventure continues as Echo... Oh, Biffo, you're still here. I thought I disabled you. Biffo does not. He has a mind of his own. Alert so backed up, we're going to need Colin Blow. Underwater adventure continues as Echo the Dolphin comes to the rescue. The Cybernic strikes back in the first part of a brand new Sonic's World story, while Knuckles and Tails battle with old Trog features. Vector, the Chaotix Croc of Dial, snaps his way into STC's center page pin-up. The Graphic Zone features your artwork at its vampish best and should put you in the mood for STC 64's Halloween horror issue. Speaking of which, check out the free gift that comes with it. See below. Signed Megadroid. Halloween treat. Halloween is heading our way and STC has decided that no self-respecting boomer should be seen without a mask. STC 64's free Sonic mask. It's just what you need to fool unsuspecting humans. So reserve a copy at your Let's local news Carlos. agent Vision, now. Dusty and Chubba for eight months in a row. Eight months in a row. Chubbo Sonic. Chubbo Sonic. Now let's take a look at the Sega charts compiled by Gallup. On the Mega Drive, Brian Lara the Cricket. Theme Park, FIFA Soccer 95, and PGA Tour Golf 3 are unchanged, first through fourth. Street Racer has risen to fifth, while Pete Sampras the Tennis 96 has dropped to sixth. <laughs> Road Rash 3 is still in seventh. <laughs> We're at 5,000 vidiboos, aren't we? We get to listen to another... We get to listen to another Sonic, don't we? Or another Biffo's Retro Reviews. We'll finish the Sega charts, and then we'll we'll read another one. Or we'll watch another one. Uh, Road Rash 3 is unchanged in 7th. Rise of the Robots is rising to 8th. Nahulpa Hockey 96 has risen to 9th. And Cannon Fodder re-enters at 10th. On Mega CD, FIFA International Soccer maintains an iron grip on the first place position. Brutal Paws of Fury and Mickey Mania have risen to second and third. World Cup USA 94 drops to fourth. Earthworm Jim re-enters at fifth. Sega Classics and Lethal Enforcers rise to sixth and seventh. While Rebel Assault and BC Racers, the impossibly difficult kart racing game starring Chuck Rock, they re-enter at 8th and 9th, and Star Wars Chess has dropped to 10th. On the Master System, Sonic Chaos and Desert Strike have risen to 1st and 2nd, pushing Batman Returns down to 3rd. Asterix and the Secret Mission makes its debut in 4th place. Winter Olympics Rainers at 5th, Desert Speed Trap is unchanged at 6th. Robocop V Terminator, Mickey Mouse 2, and Streets of Raggy are, have re-entered in 7th, 8th, and 9th place. And Sonic the Hedged Hog, the first one, has dropped all the way down to 10th. And on the Game Gear, Micro Machines and Strider 2 have risen to 1st and 2nd place. Winter Olympics re-enters at 3rd. Sonic Chaos has dropped to 4th, while Sonic the Hedged Hog 2 and Drop Zone have risen to 5th and 6th. Sonic the Hedged... the Hedgehog... the Hedgehog 
re-enters at 7th. Andre Agassi Tennis has risen to 8th, while Dragon the Bruce Lee story has dropped all the way down to 9th. And Sonic Drift Racing is a new entry in 10th place. Sonic the Hedgehog. Hedgehog! Yeah, why would anyone care about spelling hedgehog correctly in, in Sonic the Comic? Alright, time for Biffo's Retro Reviews. What one will we get this time? Hello, dudes. Welcome to Biffo's Retro Reviews, the show where we take a look at some of the most obscure and bizarre games from the past. I'm Sonic the Hedgehog, and I'm filling in for Biffo today. He's gone fishing, the lazy sod. He left me a bunch of fishing games to review, but who cares about those? They're boring and slow, just like Biffo. He's probably sitting on a pier right now, eating fish and chips and talking to his imaginary friends. What a loser! What a loser! Anyway, let's get on with the show. The first game we have here is Bassmaster's Classic for the Sega Genesis. Bass, tears classic, am I right? This game is so slow and dull, it makes me want to fall asleep. The graphics are bland, the music is annoying, and the gameplay is repetitive. You just cast your line, reel it in, and hope for a bite. Sometimes you catch a fish, sometimes you don't. Who cares? It's not like you can eat them or anything. They're just pixels on a screen. And what's with the announcer? He sounds like he's having a stroke. You've got a bite. You've hooked a lunker. You've lost it. You hooked a lunker. Yeah. I've lost it all right. I've lost it all right. I've lost my patience with this rubbish game. Oh, uh, this is, I have fed my Sonic the Hedgehog voice into the neural network, and this is, uh, this is what it made of it. Game where you catch bass. That's it. You just cast your line, reel it in, and hope for a bite. There's no skill involved, no challenge, no fun. It's like watching paint dry, except with fish. And the graphics are terrible. The water looks like blue vomit. The fish look like pixelated blobs. And the backgrounds are bland and repetitive. The music is annoying, too. It's just a bunch of twangy tunes that make you want to rip your ears off. <laughs> this game is a waste of time and money. You'd be better off playing Sonic the Hedgehog, the best game ever made. It has everything you want in a game. Speed, action, adventure, and me. I'm gonna tell you why I'm the coolest and fastest thing alive. I can run at supersonic speeds, spin dash through enemies, and collect rings like a boss. I've saved the world from Dr. Robotnik countless times, and I've starred in dozens of awesome games. Unlike Biffo, whose only claim to fame is being a comic strip character in some old magazine nobody reads anymore. <laughs> Seriously, who even remembers Biffo the Bear? He's so lame and outdated, he makes Big the Cat look cool. Instead of wasting your time with fishing games, I'm gonna show you some of the coolest and fastest games ever made. <laughs> games that feature me, Sonic the Hedgehog. You know me, I'm the Blue Blur, the Speed Demon, the Hedgehog with Attitude. I've starred in dozens of games over the years, and they're all awesome. Well, except for Sonic 6. And Sonic Boom. And Sonic Labyrinth. And Sonic Labyrinth. And Sonic Shuffle. And Sonic Free Riders. And Sonic Chronicles. And Sonic Forces. And you get the idea. But forget about those games. Let's focus on the classics, like Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3 Knuckles, Sonic 2, Sonic 3 Knuckles, Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Generations, and Sonic Mania. These are the games that made me a legend, and they're still fun to play today. Unlike fishing games, which are dull and tedious. Seriously, who wants to sit around and wait for a fish to bite? That's not fun. That's torture. Fishing games are for old people and losers, like Biffo. Hello. There we go. <laughs> and yeah, I use the uh, I use the same TTS program that Unlimited Steam used. So it has the same the same weirdnesses. Sometimes they'll they'll do little weird noises and stuff. 
So yeah. Every every 1000 Biffo bits will get us an episode of Biffo's retro reviews. Let's get our music back going again. 42 meals with Wrinkles the Demon Lord of Breakfast. I should make a Wrinkles TTS voice. <clears throat> Two qualities that a good leader needs are dignity and maturity. But then Dr. Robotnik never set out to be a good leader. Sonic so the Hedgehog. This is what a neural network does with your stereotypical American accent British voice. Yes. <laughs> oh, 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 star game. All right. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog, Project Brutus, Part 1. With wrinkles, the demon lord wrinkles. I just use audacity. I just use audacity and uh, split it up into like 10 second segments. Take that, you hellish blue hedgehog! Bah, you spoil all my plans! I'll get you one day! Squish. Taint. Feet. Ugh. There's everyone's favorite character, Grimer. I'd forgotten about him. <clears throat> Sorry to interrupt your high power think session, sir. But that day could be sooner than you think. What do you mean, Grimer? I'm referring to Project Brutus. It's almost complete. It just needs one vital ingredient only you can provide. Eggs! Elent! Grimer, take me to him! Down in the lavatory... The old Brutus, the ultimate trooper. Good work, Grimer! Quickly, bring me the brain scanner! If this works, the robot will be programmed with a copy of your brain patterns, sir. It will work, Grimer, or else... Live, Brutus, live! Kirkle. Uh, I'm alive! This is what this artist wants to draw. He wants to draw cool stuff like Brutus. He doesn't want to draw Sonic and and Grimer and Dr. Robotnik. At last, my long-awaited second-in-command, a trooper with my own brain patterns! Yes, Doctor, your personality program coupled with my computer brain makes me more than fit for the task of exterminating Sonic the Hedgehog! <laughs> the Pleasant Zone, Sonic and Co. are disguised as Bob Beaky's traveling circus. Oh, I don't... Oh, who is saying this? I guess it's Amy Rose is saying this. I don't think I've ever been to this zone before, Sonic! Me and the guys came here a while back. I had to save the whole Valagi from certain doom, as you do. See issue number 40, says the Megadroid. Looks pretty safe now, though. Guess there's no need for our disqueezes today. Park the caravan somewhere, Johnny. I need to stretch my legs. Well do, Sonic. Johnny Lightfoot is wearing a caveman suit. Oh, look at Sonic! I think you're brilliant, Sonic. Hey, I know that. But not every resident of the Pleasant Zone admires our hero. Look at this. Look at this grungy sack of crap. Put me through to Dr. Robotnik. Citadel Robotnik. What's that? You say Sonic has been sighted in the present zone? I'll, I'll alert Dr. Robotnik at once! There's no need to bother Dr. Robotnik with that receptionic. I'll deal with it! Soon a fearful ship darkens the skies of the Pleasant Land. 
Troopers, run! Arg! E I. -E. Not sure if that's them screaming or if that's the noise that the the thruster jets on the spaceship make. Also, there's a leaf there. If one of them catches that, they will they will grow a raccoon tail and be able to fly. Uh oh! Looks like trouble. Good. I could do with a workout. Says forward-facing air freshener Sonic, whose head is just barely attached to his body by a little strip of skin with a tube running through it. Citizens, surrender the hedgehog and you'll not be harmed! Here I am, Tin Heads. Who's asking for me? I am! My name is Brutus! Commander of the elite troop force of Mobius, second in command to the mighty Dr. Robotnik. Ooh, weird. 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 Looks bad, Johnny. I wish Tails and Parker were here to help us. Yeah, but I've got enough problems of their own at the moment, wherever they are. Parker Lewis was trapped in another dimension last issue, and Tails is currently starring with Knuckles in their own story, says the Mega Droid. Troopers attack! Oh. oh no. You can't draw that in this comic. Fadang! Badush! Don't you dudes ever learn? The good guys always win! <laughs> Not sure about that this time, Sonic has loads of them. Keep attacking, Johnny! Amy's right. We've braved worse battles before. Sonic has torn the head right off of this robot. But you've never faced me before, Spikeball! Ha! Huh. Throw your best shot, Buckethead! Will this do? Fwack. <sighs> He's... He... Uh... He sure is stronger than the other troopers! That's right, Hedgehog! I am unbeatable! No, Robot! is unbeatable, I always. You won't get the chance this time, Sonic. Troopers, finish them! ba da da da, -da. Next issue defeated! <laughs> well, we know what happened to Sonic. Maybe this is the last issue. <laughs> the Ghoulish Graphic Zone! Show STC what you can do with imagination in a sheet of paper. Boomers who get their artwork printed will receive a pack of Crayola pens! Sonic Capers, drawn by Adam Chandler of Prestwich, Manchester. Evil Echidna? Drawn by Thomas Prosser of Kringekuskuster Gloss. He owns a Mega Drive. It's that old red devil. Drawn by Andrew Munson of Leeds. He owns a Mega Drive. Bat Hog. Drawn by Ruth Sargent of Port Erin, Isle of Man. Owns a Game Gear and a Master System. Oh, there's more. Move over, Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, we get a Grimer fan art. Richard Eek's favorite character is Grimer of Dereham, Norfolk. He owns a Game Gear and nothing else. <clears throat> Amy Wright of Howick, Scotland has drawn Home Sweet Home of, like, Vampire Sonic holding the abdomen of some kind of insect. And there's Tails as a bat. Franken-Sonic! 
Drawn by, drawn by Philip McKithick of Mill Lane, Royton. He owns no game systems. <clears throat> Nightmare on Greehill. Sonic Kruger. Kruger. Nightmare on Greehill. <laughs> Sonic Kruger. Drawn by Gareth Hamilton of Craigoven, North, I North, I Northern Ireland. He owns a Mega Drive. Yeah. Gree Hill. To get your handiwork selected in future graphic zones, please take note of the following tips. Draw in paint or felt tip pen on plain white paper. Avoid lined paper and pencils or crayons, as they don't show up as well when printed. Be original and don't copy pictures from the comic. Come up with your own ideas. Include your name and address, preferably written in capital letters on the back of the page, and then this is where you send it. If they print your picture, you get some Crayola pens. <clears throat> also, he's not wearing the Freddy Krueger sweater. He's wearing, like, some sort of Freddy Krueger full body suit. A body stocking. Return of Echo the Dolphin, Part 4. The Asterite has given Echo the power to swim among the stars and enter the home of the Vortex, deadly aliens who have stolen Earth's sea life for food. Once there, Echo can use the language of the Vortex to return his fellow sea creatures to their home. Echo is cussing a big ol' swear. Echo's mind is so full of the knowledge of the Vortex that he can scarcely remember his own language. The Vortex! Echo knows it is important that the Vortex thinks he is just another sea creature from Earth. It has me! Soon I'll see... My friends! He's going to heaven. As Echo swirls through the cross-dimensional turbulence, he understands why this race of aliens is called the Vortex. It's over! What is this strange sea? Not water, thicker like oil. Echo sets about contacting his friends from Earth. Zreek! Who are you? Echo, here to save you! You talk funny! How are you going to save us? We don't even know where we are! I do. I can get you back! You can, wonderful, but how? I have a plan! Call out that way! Bring everyone here! I will do as you say! Zreek! 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 Greetings, brothers, sisters, my friend will e oh. Greetings, brothers, sisters, my friend will explain! <clears throat> uh... Who's saying that? I don't know which dolphin is which. <laughs> Okay, I guess this is the regular dolphin, because it doesn't have stars on its head. Oh, Echo said this. Greetings, brothers and sisters. My friend will explain. This is Echo. He can't speak very well, but he tells me he can take us all home. We have to bring all the sea creatures here so we can leave together. There's no time for questions. Just do it. Thank you. Herded by the dolphins, the creatures of Earth's seas begin to gather in the area <laughs> beneath the vortex slash Earth gateway. Thanks to at SSFSX17 for my sub gift. Chubbo Sonic. <laughs> Chubbo Sonic. Hey, everyone! Well, that's Echo talking. That everyone? Same show, Echo. Good. Tell them. 
A few moments or I'll be going home, Echo will see you safely through the gateway, everyone keep together, make sure young don't stray, we won't be able to come back for anyone left behind. You're as ready as you'll ever be. Thank you all. Asterite, this is Echo, we are ready! Next issue, Homeward Bound. Ugh! Knuckles and Tails in The Revenge of Trog, Part 5. Trog has summoned the evil creature known as the Dark One. Now he turns his frightening power on the Enchanter Kings. Do not try to resist, you old fools! Knuckles, Tails, and Moraine entered the land beyond to rescue the Enchanter Kings, but even they were no match for the Dark One. Do you feel yourselves starting to change, my old friends? To transform into a superior life form like me? It's going right into his eyeball. <laughs> the stink fingers of the, the Dark One are going into his eyeball. Don't you remember, Trogs? You were one of us once. You were the third Enchanter King. Surely some small fragment of good remains. Together we three shall enslave all of the Nameless Zone. Ha 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 ha! On second thoughts, I wouldn't hold out any hopes for that fragment of good. It is no use trying to resist, mortals. Ugh. Meanwhile, the force field is gone. It will be taking all the Dark One's power to change the Enchanter Kings. What can we do? I know. It is done. I feel different, more powerful. Now my revenge on the lands beyond the Dimension Bridge can at last begin. Starting with our prisoners! Hey, where are they? I thought you had them, Dark One! I knew I couldn't rely on a mere mortal like you. No! The Dark Orb, it's gone! He's got a big fat old butt. No, you fool! At the Dimensional Bridge, the gateway to the Nameless Zone, if you're wrong about the Dark Orb, then the Enchanter Kings are doomed. It's our best chance. I'm betting that Trog uses this orb to control the Dark One. Once we get it back to the Nameless Zone, we'll find a way to force the Dark One to release the Enchanter Kings from his magic. I think the Trog may have other ideas. Go for help. <clears throat> The orb, you must give it to me! Oh, what do I do with it now, Knuckles? We've seen how powerful the Dark One is. We're never going to make it across this bridge. Tails, get rid of it! Throw it away! You say so? This is our dimensional bridge at the moment we're above non-existent space. Anything falling from this bridge will simply cease to exist. That's got rid of fright features. Hey, hey look at the Enchanter Kings. What happened? Search me, old boy. But we seem to be our old selves again. What about Trog? No such luck. Rarg! You have ruined my plans. For that, I will destroy you all. Next issue, the final revenge of Trog. Q&A Zone, how to cheat at Echo the Dolphin 2. Lots of passwords. How to cheat at Alex Kid in Miracle World on the Master System. How to cheat on the Lion King for the Master System. Sonic's World in Cybernick Strikes Back Part 1 New Story. A familiar sight on planet Mobius. Move, prisoners! You'll soon have the honor of working as badniks for the great Dr. Robotnik. Not quite the career I had in mind, to be honest. Says this guy here. 
Silence, slave, you need some attitude adjustment. Ack! Fazam. We're under attack! It must be Sonic and his outlaws! Wrong troopers! Not Sonic! Not his outlaws! Just me! The Cybernick! Destroy the traitor! Badat, badat. Fit chance, bucket bouncers! You creeps are such lousy shots! Fazam. Kadoom! That's the way to do it! You're still doomed, Cybernick! Activating self destruct program! <laughs> Why? Bwahoom! Cybernick! No one could survive that! Looks like Robotnik built me to last! Oh. Who is this? <laughs> Who is. Th what flicky is this? There! You're free to go! Thank you, but what are you? Those bandits called you a traitor! Yay! Time to get up and move about. Oh! That's turd the bird. <clears throat> yes, until recently I was shorty the squirrel. Till Dr. Robotnik chose me to become his ultimate badnik, the cybernik. <clears throat> but an error in his programming left me with a free mind. I turned against Robotnik and pledged to fight his evil plans. For the full story of the Cybernix origin, see STC 45 to 47. Thanks, Mega Droid. Worst thing is, unlike other badniks, I'm connected to the circuitry of this armor. I'm trapped as the Cybernix for the rest of my life. Maybe I can help. I'm an engineer. Top of my field, the names. Techno, yes, I already knew who you were. That's why I freed you today. I do need you to help me, but even your skills won't get me out of this armor. No, Techno, I need you to build me a bomb to destroy Robotnik's factory in the chemical plant zone. Meanwhile, at Citadel Robotnik... What?! Dr. Robotnik is not a happy dictator. Grimer, you're telling me that the Cybernik has interfered with my plans again! Yes, Doctor, I'm afraid so. I hate Grimer. Grimer's a bad character, and he's, like, in every single issue now. I'll have to use my great mind to think of a way to dispose of short fuse permanently. Well, Grimar, I'm waiting. Ah, oh, yes, Master, you're about to have a brilliant idea. Oh, no! You're about to mention the artificial life form I created, the Shapeshifter. Of course! She's perfect for the task! Thank you, Doctor. You know how I value your praise. I metamorphia, I promise you, I'll destroy shot fuse of Cybernic utterly. Next issue, confrontation. Speed lines. Here we go. <clears throat> Yeah, this Just thing out. One touch of that button gadget, and you'll be under my spell. Not much of a game if you ask me. Press the button. <clears throat> the writer's barely disguised fetish. The writer's barely disguised fetish. <clears throat> Poetic justice. Sonic, a hedgehog with super spin attack. Sparkster, a possum with a rocket pack. Knuckles and a kidna with a mighty punch. 
Robotnik, man scientist who's out to lunch. Tails, a fox who can really fly. Charmy, a bee who belongs in the sky. Amy, Sonic's secret date. STC, the coolest read. Oh, and Megazoid's great. Says Adam L. Marty of Watford Hertz. Oh, my Watford Hertz. He owns a Mega Drive. With your talent, you'll go far. A super duper rhyming star. <laughs> Flashy Hedgehog. Drawn by Boomer Lewis of Saltney, Nurchester. Four, sh four bits short of a cybernick. Drawn by Peter Hansen of Kettering North Ants. <clears throat> Rubber Kitty, thank you for nine months. <laughs> Speak your mind. Dear Megadroid, in my opinion, the Sonic Swell story Cam and Bert really sucks. And it's not all Echo the Dolphin stinks said Richard Harris of Colville. <laughs> he lives in Colville. No wonder he's so cranky about everything. That's a shame, Richard. I always enjoyed watching your films. Robot nicked. Dear Mega Droid, help. I've been kidnapped by Dr. Robot and it can only release me if I give him a sonic stationary set. If not, he's threatening to turn me into a bad nick. Says Louise the Barber of Chalmersford, Essex, who owns a Mega Drive and a Saturn. A Saturn? Louise Barber, you should not be begging for free stuff. Your family is obviously wealthy beyond measure if they bought you a Saturn at launch. Mm. It's amazing what some folk will resort to, Louise. Next issue, Halloween happenings. Free Sonic Mask. You can poke holes in his eyeballs. Sonic tricks. Cybernic treats. Echo the Dolphin traps. Knuckles and Tails trogs. Plus, Grizzly Graphic Zone. Bat Brain Badnik Pin Up. STC 64. Ghoulishly Good. On sale Saturday, the 28th of October, 1995, for a pound 20. Your rating for issue 63, from 1 to 100%. There was no review zone in this issue. They're running out of games to review. There mustn't be any new ones coming out. There we go. <clears throat> Read it whilst backwards long jumping. So yeah, I got ideas though for some really bad ideas to some really really bad ideas for for game to play tonight. Uh it came up when I was in uh, one of Duke Donuts' streams when we were looking through uh Nintendo Power. <laughs> we're not playing Daydream and Davy. Maybe some other time we'll return to that. We're gonna play. We're gonna play Dark Man on the NES. <laughs> this wonderful video game. We got the idea for this because Nintendo Power showed all the the characters he assumes the identities of and they all look like the Stooges. <laughs> Oh, Dark Man, and look at this disgusting Biffo the Bear finger. No! Go back. Story. Dr. Peyton Westlake was a brilliant scientist who was working on new synthetic skin ideal for Burns sufferers. Taking old photographs of burn victims, he was able to mold a mask using a computer to recreate their faces. Unfortunately, the skin was photosensitive and could not last over 99 minutes in light. An evil gang, led by Durant, broke into the lab, looking for an important document. They killed Peyton's assistant and attempting to leave no witness. They blew up the lab and Peyton with it, but he survived. 
horribly burnt, he was given a new surgical technique, which made him unable to feel any pain. Unfortunately, the treatment had side effects. He had violent mood swings and adrenaline flowed through his body, unchecked, giving him great strength. Peyton escaped from the hospital and became Darkman. Help Darkman control his rage and gain his revangi. Oh, we're one bit away. One biffo bit away. <laughs> one biffo bit away from another episode of Biffo's Retro Reviews. All right. Oh, you can tell it's a good game because it gives you the, the opportunity to turn the music and sound off. Here's Tony the Spider. Oh. <laughs> If you people only Oh, this looks good. <laughs> this looks good. Out of the ring. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Tony the Spider. <laughs> it's time for Biffo's retro reviews. <clears throat> Let's see. Where did we we'll pick out another one at random? Ah, it was <clears throat> Mood swings. What one will we get this time, I wonder? <laughs> Here we go. Hello, chums. Welcome to another episode of Biffo's Retro Reviews, where I review the best and worst games from the past. Today I'm going to explain my game rating system, which is very simple and easy to understand. Trust me, you'll love it. My game rating system has five categories. Graphics, sound, gameplay, smell, and cheese. <laughs> Each category has a score from one to 10, where one is bad and 10 is good. But there's a twist. The scores are not numbers, they are words. For example, a score of one in graphics means rubbish. A score of five means may, and a score of 10 means wow. A score of one in sound means quiet. A score of five means loud. And a score of ten means deafening. A score of one in gameplay means boring. A score of five means fun. And a score of ten means addictive. A score of one in smell means stinky. A score of five means fresh. And a score of ten means delicious. And finally, a score of one in cheese means moldy. A score of five means tasty. And a score of ten means cheesy. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's the more. The scores are not fixed. They <laughs> change depending on the game genre. For example, a platformer game needs good graphics and gameplay, but not so much sound and smell. A horror game needs good sound and smell, but not so much graphics and cheese. <laughs> And a puzzle game needs good cheese and gameplay, but not so much graphics and sound. So, depending on the genre, I adjust the scores accordingly. <laughs> For example, if a platformer game has a score of 5 in graphics, I bump it up to 7. If a horror game has a score of 5 in sound, I bump it up to 8. And if a puzzle game has a score of 5 in cheese, I bump it up to 9. But wait, there's even more. <laughs> The scores are not final. They are affected by my mood. For example, if I'm feeling happy, I add one point to each score. If I'm feeling sad, I subtract one point from each score. And if I'm feeling angry, I flip each score upside down. For example, if a game has a score of seven in graphics and I'm feeling happy, I make it eight. If I'm feeling sad, I make it six. And if I'm feeling angry, I make it four. But wait, there's still more. The scores are not absolute. They are relative to each other. <laughs> For example, if a game has the same score in all categories, I give it an extra point in each category. If a game has the highest score in one category and the lowest score in another category, I swap them around. <laughs> and if a game has the same score as another game in any category, I flip a coin to decide which one is better. But wait, there's one last thing. The scores are not independent. They are linked to each other. 
For example, if a game has a high score in graphics and sound, but a low score in gameplay and smell, I multiply them together to get the final score. If a game has a high score in gameplay and cheese, but a low score in graphics and sound, I divide them by each other to get the final score. And if a game has an average score in all categories, I add them all together to get the final score. So, there you have it, chums. <laughs> That's my game rating system in a nutshell. It's very simple and easy to understand. <laughs> Trust me, you'll love it. And if you don't love it, well, tune in next time for another episode of Biffo's Retro Reviews. Bye for now. Hello, Chuck. There we go. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a good one. Biffo explaining his his rating system for his game reviews. All right. Speaking of rating systems for game reviews, we got this to play. All right. Uh, start. Darkman is trapped inside a desert warehouse by Durant's men. You must escape the complex and carry out your plan of Ravengi. Use buttons A and B to balance on tight rope. A Biffo review of the game I'm currently playing. Well, the, uh... Generating the text doesn't take long because I use uh, I use Bing's AI for that. Oh, 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 oh no! Oh, jeez! Oh, whoa! Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> we can do this. We can have him do a dance. Uh, doing the voice, though, takes a little bit longer, because... Oh! Oh! Jeez! Oh. Yeah, it depends on, like, how long it is. Because my GPU is kind of on the old side. My GPU isn't terribly new. And, uh... I ain't... Oh! I ain't got hundreds of dollars to spend on a new one just for Biffo reviews. Okay. Mm. Yeah, at least, at least Bing. It has it has a filter on it to prevent it from coming up with anything really horrible. Oh boy. <laughs> Darkman has failed in his attempt for revenge. Grief and rage prepare him for another try. I've been collecting them. Yeah. Look at Darkman's horrible keyboard. My luck to be stuck on a dress oh, I'm not gonna continue. I've only gotten past the first screen. Okay. Oh no! Oh, we got a new PB. Uh, 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 uh. Take that, you wise guy. Oh, look at that masher. It's making masher noises. Oh. Oh no. Oh! 
Okay. I'm standing on it. Okay, I'm standing on it. Oh no, it's one of these stages. It's a minecart stage. Ladies and gentlemen, keep watching. You know, buddy, I've never so happy in my life. This is my first time to wrestle my own home state. And I'll PW for the action this. It's one of the top of here to come here today. The arrows <laughs> lie. To stay and not to play. Buddy, there's no stand go. To be the best, you gotta beat the best. That's my oh! way. So I was holding left. Darkman died. All right, where does continue put us? Oh, good. And I got the fire. We'll be right back. Hey, where's your manners? I just lifted my hat no. to you. You saw a cat? Oh. Really? Upstart? <laughs> oh, I survived. Ladies and gentlemen, Randy Bryant. Ladies and gentlemen, Randy Bryant. It's been a long, long way. You're going down this time. Yeah. You're going cool. Down. We'll be back. This is what Bill Ash did to Randy Bryant. This is why Randy Bryant wants Bill. I didn't want that potion Bill anyway. Been too long years. You've been oh, talking no. to talk, but now it's time to see if you can walk the walk. I want to get you, Bill Ash. No matter where it's at. When it takes place, you're going down. Another grotto review. Oh, another grotto review. Oh boy, here we go. You jumped up and you pinned me by accident. You jumped up and pinned me by accident. You walk that line with me one more time. You make me so mad I want to spit. But brother, buddy Lee, you know, and everybody Lee. knows, Jeff Fala, you got lucky, you can't beat me, and you know it, don't you? That's a good permed mullet that, that he's got. Cruise. Let's go to the ring. That's good wrestler hair. All right. What one will we get this time? Oh, we got a... There we go. Hello, chums. Welcome to Biffo's Retro Reviews, where I take a look at some of the classic games from the past and try to recreate them with my own twist. Today, I'm going to show you how I made my own version of Pac-Man, the iconic Pac arcade game Man. where you eat dots and avoid ghosts. Sounds easy, right? Well, not for me. First, I had to find a way to make the maze. I thought I could use some cardboard boxes and cut out the walls and paths. But I didn't have enough boxes, so I had to improvise with some other materials. I used some old newspapers, some duct tape, some toilet paper rolls, and even some cheese slices. It looked a bit messy, but I was proud of my work. <laughs> Next, I had to make the pack. Man character. I decided to use a yellow balloon and draw a mouth and eyes on it. Then, I attached a string to it and tied it to a stick. This way... I could control it like a puppet and make it move around the maze. I also made some dots out of candy and placed them along the paths. Finally, I had to make the ghost. I thought I could use some old pillowcases. Oh, man. Pending disaster, thank you for 57 months. Out holes for the eyes. Then I would wear them over some old pillow had to make the ghosts. I had to make I the ghosts. I thought I could use some old pillowcases and cut out holes for the eyes. Then I would wear them over my head and chase after Pac-Man. But I didn't have enough pillowcases, so I had to borrow some from my neighbors. <laughs> they were not very happy about it, but they agreed to lend me some. So everything was ready for my Pac-Man game. I set up my camera and started recording. I moved Pac-Man around the maze with the stick and made him eat the dots. It was fun at first, but then things went wrong. The first problem was that the cheese slices started to melt and drip from the walls. They made the maze slippery and sticky. Pac-Man got stuck in some places and couldn't move. The second problem was that the candy dots attracted some ants. <laughs> They crawled all over Pac-Man and bit him. 
He started to deflate and lose air. The third problem was that the ghosts were too big for the maze. They couldn't fit through the gaps and got tangled in the newspaper and duct tape. They ripped apart the maze and made a huge mess. And the worst problem was that one of the ghosts was actually a real ghost. <laughs> it turned out that one of the pillowcases I borrowed was haunted by a spirit of an angry old lady. She didn't like me using her pillowcase for my game and she wanted revenge. She chased me around the room with a frying pan and tried to hit me on the head. I ran for my life and screamed for help. The camera fell over and stopped recording. That was the end of my Pac-Man game. <laughs> well, chums, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Bifo's Retro Review. Bifo. As you can see, making your own video game is not as easy as it looks. <laughs> Maybe next time I'll try something simpler like Tetris or Pong. Until then, stay retro and stay safe. Hello, chum. There we go. That's how video games are made. You just, you just get like a bunch of cardboard and garbage and balloons and borrow some pillowcases. That's, that's how video games are made. Yeah, lots of cheese. Oh, boy. We got a platform here. Darkman's not very good at jumping. Oh, we made it. Oh no, we still got the Biffo graph. I got Biffo, you are you are taking over. Biffo Mania is running wild. He's a rascal. Oh! 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 oh. How did that happen? Oh, oh. We got fire. Oh. No! No! <laughs> this game is scary. Oh, I gotta have Biffo review Dark Man, yeah. Oh, great googly moogly, what am I gonna do here? Dark Man does not possess the power to squat. I've collected all the level one emotes. I've collected all the level one emotes. I've collected all the level one emotes. Thank you, Twitch. I get the idea. There. Oh, boy. 
boy. We're getting closer to another episode of Biffo's Retro Reviews. Smasher! Oh, survival! <laughs> Staring at your only picture of Durant's henchman, Polly, you grab your camera. The more photos of Polly taken, the more time you'll have to gain your revenge. Oh, Curly. We gotta take pictures of Curly. Oh! My camera's been shot! Where are you, Curly? There you are! Oh, my camera's been shot again! Come on, Curly, where are you? Gotcha! Oh, we got an excellent, excellent photography of Curly. Soldiers, why can't we have something different for a change? Like kippers. Oh, stop! Why? I don't think I might be able to get the old red time. You track Curly down to Central Park, putting on his mask. You look around. It feels like a trap, but you don't care. Yeah. Oh, we're Curly now. We're Curly. Oh boy, what has happened to the webcam? Why is it so... Why is it so dark? We need it that dark, do we? Oh, we need to fix that. There we go, that's a bit better. A spooky house. You handle the gun. Here we go, Curly. Oh, this is a bomb. Oh, Curly's got his slapjack. Oh, he can do that. Curly has the power to squat. <laughs> Climb the ladder, Curly. Get up there. Grab, grab. Ugh. Yeah, Curly has the innate ability to pick up loose change. Ragadom! Alf Anonymous gifting a sub to Ragadom. <laughs> Curly! 
curly. Oh. A blackjack like an old. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, we can put in our name, and we got an, another episode of Biffo's Retro Reviews. Liam Neeson! Elf Anonymous gifting a sub to Kyo. Liquid Flood gifting a sub to Liam Neeson. What an awful keyboard Darkman has on his computer. Biffo is awful. <laughs> okay, we'll continue. Hopefully there's not limited continues. There we go. All right. What Biffo's retro review will we get this time? Hello, chums. Welcome to another episode of Biffo's Retro Reviews where I show you some of the coolest and rarest toys based on video games. Today, I have a special treat for you. A complete Ooh. set of Sonic the Hedgehog action figures from 1991. These are very hard to find and very expensive, but I managed to get them all for a bargain price of Steam Thousand. Steam Aren't they amazing? Thousand? Look at this Sonic figure. He has articulated joints, a spinning wheel on his back, and a button that makes him say, gotta go fast, in a high-pitched voice. And this Tails figure. He has two tails that can spin like a propeller, and a button that makes him say, I'll help you, Sonic. I'll help in you, In a squeaky Sonic. voice. <laughs> and this Robotnik figure. He has a detachable egg-shaped pod, a spring-loaded missile launcher, and a button that makes him say, I hate that hedgehog, in a grumpy voice. But enough talking. Let's play with them. <laughs> I'll pretend that Sonic and Tails are trying to stop Robotnik from taking over the world with his army of badniks. Pew! 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 Zoom! 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 Room! 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 Go! Take that, Robo! Take that, Robotnik! You'll never catch us. We're too... Oh, no! What's this? A trap. A giant metal ball with spikes. It's coming right at us. Quick, Sonic, use your spin dash. <laughs> Room! Oh, no! It didn't work. The ball hit Sonic and sent him flying. Moo! Oh, no! No, 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 no! Chums, this is terrible. His head came off. <laughs> His wheel came off. His button came off. He's not saying anything anymore. He's not spinning anymore. He's not going fast anymore. He's gone. He's gone forever. Why? Why did this happen? Why did I have to play so rough? Why did I have to be so careless? Why did I have to lose my best friend? I'm sorry, chums. I can't go on with this review. I'm too sad. I need some time to mourn. Please forgive me. Please don't unsubscribe. Please don't unsubscribe. Please don't hate me. Goodbye for now, chums. This is Beefo the Bear signing Beefo. off. Hello, chums. <laughs> this is Beefo the Bear. Beefo. Oh, that was a good one. He broke his expensive Sonic figure. Yeah, as a, a special treat, sometimes the AI will will mispronounce Biffo's name. Yeah, he got them for such a deal for, for Steve Thousand. No, no! Curly! <laughs> Whoa! Alf Anonymous gifting a sub to Abs Nerdity. Thank you very much for that. Enjoy all of your all of your really good emotes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, get him, Curly. Get him! Oh yeah! <laughs> oh. Curly didn't make his jump. 
Curly didn't make his jump. Get a good running start. Ugh! Whoa! Ugh! Log! Okay. One of the famous floating platforms of Central Park. like a... Hmm. Starting to think this game might not be very realistic. <laughs> oh no! Curly died! The bomb shrapnel got him! No! Okay, we know what to do now. We know to watch out for that guy. He's here to ruin our good time. <laughs> this game is hard. All right. I think Curly might be wearing that sweater. He wore in the one episode where it got stuck on him, and they had to spend like five full minutes trying to get it off of him. That's the one where they uh, they get jobs as as construction workers. I'm gonna make this jump. Ugh. Okay, almost there. Hata! got devoured by by piranhas I don't suppose he can jump off of... Oh, yes, he can. Yeah, take that, flickering man. Okay. 
Thank you for the raid. We're playing a playing a really good video game here. A video game in which you must impersonate and kill the Stooges. continues Cry about it some more dark man Boot lacking Darkman. Oh. No, Darkman, what have you done? Potion is my oh. Let me see. Big Flat Wizard says I'm an N team hunter. <laughs> oh. Someone says I'm an N team member. Of course, I could be a B team player, or maybe I'm a football team cheerleader. Oh, I give up. I can't figure out who I am. Hmm, that's odd. I've never seen a boulder with an ingrown toenail before. Excellent. Oh, there's our dude. We haven't seen him in a while. Oh, jeez, Dark Man! We didn't get that potion. <laughs> Confuse it into thinking he's Texan. Oh no, there's this stage again. Dark Man has died. Nyahum! <laughs> Might 
Good. Hata! Oh! Oh, success! Starting to get good at this game. Now we gotta take pictures of Curly again. Where are you, Curly? Shep, peek under that door. Larry, come on. Oh, I've been shot! There he oh What's the matter, baby face? There's something fishy going on in there. Stand aside, I'll straighten everything out. Push me up to that trench. Right. Up the old vehicle. Where'd he go? There he is. No! No! You're gonna start that again. Wait a minute. Pick on somebody inside. Oh, we got a good curly disguise. Not as good as last time. Alright. Back to this mess. ever closer to another episode of Biffo's Retro Reviews. Oh, we made it! Back to where we were. We're back to where we were. Okay, we're we're making record time in this game now. Oh my God! What happened to my car? What happened to my car? Oh no! Curly's been punched to death. Good jump, Curly! <laughs> Good jump! Oh! I, I can enter my name. There we go. Continue!
good. Dark man. Curly, what's wrong with you? Oh! Oh no, he fell in! Oh! He's just... He's just choosing not to jump now. Well, there goes a continue. Down the toilet. Oh, the, the piranhas are insta-kills. That's good. Oh, generation! Well, this life is down the toilet. Curly got saw-bladed. Although, realistically, it should do the thing where the saw blade gets all messed up. And Curly goes, oh, 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 look! Where's Jumpin' Jeff Farmer? Unlimited. That's what he called himself, Destruction Unlimited. He's gonna put me down and I'm never gonna get back up. No one's ever done that. I've done a lot of things in my day, and I've got hurt many a time. But I've always risen to the occasion. You're not gonna hold me down. <laughs> Curly me almost down, fell. And I'm not gonna lay down for anybody. You wanna fight me? You wanna wrestle me? I'll do either one. But one way or another, <laughs> I'm gonna come out on top. Oh. I think this is our last continue. Here's jumping Jeff Farmer. Jumping Jeff Destruction Farmer. Unlimited. That's what he called himself. Destruction Unlimited. He's gonna put me down, and I'm never gonna get back up. No one's ever done that. I've done a lot of things in my day, and I've got hurt many a time. But I've always risen to the occasion. You're not gonna hold me down. Nobody's gonna hold me down, and I'm not gonna lay down for anybody. You wanna fight me? You wanna wrestle me? I'll do either one. No! Oh, okay, one don't bother another, fighting that guy. Come out don't top. bother fighting that guy. He's too good. He's played this Back game before. Moment. Wrestling card for an IPW show. Good job, Curly. Oh, this game is hard. Oh man, the dream match. at all if you design a t-shirt featuring a wrestling card for an IPW show it's an insta buy in this home all i have to say is our partner oh the shock master oh no don't try to do anything in this game <laughs> Moses, 
22! This is easy game for small baby to play. Oh, it's comic time. This is it, Philippe. This is it, Philippe. It doesn't matter to me now. It's too late. They gave me the black spot, and it's my duty as a conscientious pirate to drop dead at once. I can't believe it. No, just watch this. Let's see. Coming up on the end of TV oh, Toyland. He wasn't kidding. Where have we left off? We've read this one. We've read this one. Oh, 36. Issue 36. 37 is the final issue. So we've got one more issue of TV Toyland left after this. Also, someone has has tried to color this with some sort of disgusting old toxic paint. Toxic 1960s British paint. TV Toyland! Pinky and Perky are playing a game of Skittles with the wooden soldiers. Oh! We get to do... We get to do a Biffo's retro reviews. I'll finish reading this cover and then we can look at Biffo. As you can see, Pinky's ball knocked some down. Now if Perky's ball knocks down as many Skittles as Pinky's has done, how many Skittles will be left standing? I have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> Captain Ruff has put some weights on the scales. Edwin needs others that are exactly the same to balance the scales. Can you say which ones he must choose from the shapes below? Here are three of your friends having a jolly ride on the magic roundabout. But two more are hiding in the picture. See if you can find them and say their names. All right, time for Biffo. Let's get the Biffinator up here. What one will we get next? Hello, chums. Oh, we've already Hello, we're heard, chums. We've Hello, heard that one. Chums. Here we go. It's me, Biffo the Bear, and welcome to another episode of Biffo's Retro Reviews. Today I am going to talk about one of my favorite classic ear pigs, Dragon Quest 17. Ear pigs. The quest for more dragons. <laughs> this game was released in 1997. Elf Anonymous gifting a sub to, to Melamute. Thank you very much. Dragon Quest 17 released in 1997. Make a wish, dear, and blow off the camera. One of the classic ear pigs. Here they go. Game was released in 1997 for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, and it was a masterpiece of pixel art storytelling and gameplay. You play as a young hero who must travel across the land of Dragonia collecting dragon eggs and fighting evil dragon lords. Along the way, you meet many colorful characters, such as Princess Dragina, the dragon princess who joins your party, Sir Drago, the dragon knight who teaches you how to ride dragons, and Draculix, the dragon vampire who Draculix. wants to suck your blood. <laughs> the game is full of secrets and surprises, and I'm going to share some of them with you. Here are some of Biffo's top tips for Dragon Quest 17. To get the best weapon in the game, the Dragon Slayer Sword, you need to find all 100 dragon eggs and bring them to the Dragon Master in the hidden dragon cave. He will reward you with the sword and a special dragon mount. However, be careful not to hatch any of the eggs before you get there or else you will have to fight a baby dragon. 
to prevent them from hatching, you need to keep them in a cold place, such as your freezer or your fridge. Trust me, it works. To level up Trust faster, me, you works. need to fight the strongest enemies in the game, the metal dragons. These are rare and elusive creatures that can run away at any moment. They also have very high defense and can only be damaged by critical hits. However, there is a trick to make them easier to defeat. You need to equip the Dragon Magnet accessory, which attracts metal dragons to your party. You can get this item by trading 10 dragon scales with the Shady Merchant in Dragon Town. He will also give you a free copy of Dragon Magazine, which has some useful tips and cheats for the game. To unlock the secret ending of the game, <laughs> you need to do something very special. You need to kill every single dragon in the game. Yes, even the friendly ones. <laughs> this will trigger a hidden event where you will face the final boss, the Dragon God. He is the most powerful enemy in the game and has 9,999 apes and 999 imp. He Imp. can use every spell and skill H in the and game Imp. and can wipe out. However, there is a way to beat him. You need to use the Dragon Flute item, which can summon any dragon you have encountered in the game. You can get this item by completing the Dragon Arena mini game in Dragon City. <laughs> you need to win 100 battles in a row without losing or quitting. The Dragon Flute will allow you to call upon any dragon you want <laughs> and use their abilities against the Dragon God. For example, you can use For Princess example. Dragon as Dragon Kiss skill to charm him and make him attack himself. Or you can use Draculix's Dragon Bite skill to drain his hype and MP. Hype if and you MP. manage to defeat him, you will see the true ending of the game where you become the new dragon god and rule over all dragons. <laughs> That's all for today's episode of Biffo's Retro Reviews. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new about this amazing game. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more retro gaming goodness. And remember, keep on questing for more dragons. See you next time, chums. There we go. That was that was a good one. That's I would play that game. That sounds like a good video game to play. Oops, all dragons. <laughs> Champion the Wonder Horse. Champion is the leader of a herd of wild horses. His friends are the boy Ricky and Rebel. Ricky's dog. One day, Ricky was having a ride on his pal. Oh, Biffo, what are you doing here? Get lost. One day, Ricky was having a ride on his pal, Champion the Wonder Horse, when Rebel gave a warning bark. He had seen smoke, and Ricky saw it too. Look, champ, he cried. Who could be so silly as to light a fire here? Come on. A red Indian, bo oh no, this one's racist, had lit a fire. And Ricky saw him when they reached the clump of trees. The boy was putting more wood on the fire, and Ricky gasped, Oh dear! He's making the fire much bigger! We must stop him! As Ricky slid off champion, he cried, Please don't put any more wood on your fire! It might set the trees alight! But the Indian boy shook his head. I won't put the fire out, he said. I mustn't. This fire is very important. Ricky did not argue. He picked up a branch and began beating the flames. Don't do that, pleaded the Indian boy. I am lost and shall be lost forever, unless my daddy sees the smoke and comes to find me. Don't worry, we'll take you home, said Ricky when the fire was out. Where do you live? The boy replied, at the Indian camp. So Ricky, who knew where the camp was, told the Indian boy to climb up onto Champion behind him. They reached the Indian camp, and the boy's mummy and daddy were overjoyed when they heard what had happened. Our son was lucky to find such clever friends, cried the chief. He won't light fires again, I am sure. Next week, Champion wins a race, and Wiki Ricky wins a friendship. 
No. Answers to Pujlay's on front page. Pinky knocked down three Skittles. So if Perky knocks down three, then there will be three left standing. Dougal and Zebedee are hiding. Edwin must choose the weights marked A, C, and E. Here's the funny bunny who loves eating jam, Bunny Cuddles, and his friend, Tiny Mole. Bunny Cuddles looked in the jam shop window one day, and he saw a tall, fancy-shaped jar of jam for five shillings. I would like that, thought Bunny, but I only have sixpence. Now there is a lady bunny selling flowers near the shop. And Bunny had an artful idea. He bought the tallest bunch of flowers the flower bunny had, and hurried home to give it to Tiny. Oh, kind, said Tiny, but I haven't got a tall vase. Bunny knew that. I know what to do, he said. He took Tiny to the jam shop and showed him the tall jar of jam. You can use that for a vase, Tiny, he said. It only needs emptying. Yes, and I know who's going to do that, murmured Tiny Mole as they hurried into the jam shop. Tiny knew Bunny had played a trick on him. But you did buy me some flowers, Bunny, he said. So I will buy the I will buy the jar of jam. And that was how Tiny had a tall vase for his flowers, and greedy Bunny Cuddles had a lovely big feast of jam. Next week you can share another feast of fun with Bunny Cuddles and Tiny Mole. Bunny Cuddles is in a hurry to buy some more jam. Can you help him find the quickest way to the jam shop? Uh, oh no, dead end, game over! Pinky and Perky! One day, Pinky and Perky discovered that their umbrellas were quite worn out. Have you got an umbrella? We shall have to just buy two new umbrellas, said Pinky, and down to Jumbo's umbrella shop they went. Here they are in the shop. They did have fun looking at all the umbrellas and choosing which they liked best. Do you like those at the front with the pretty handles? Or do you like one of the others? Or do you like them all? Well, Perky chose the one with a horse's head handle, and Pinky chose the yellow one. Here's Perky paying for them. Then Perky used his umbrella, but funny Pinky kept his under his coat. It's too pretty to get wet, he said. Next week, funny Pinky and Perky buy a hat for Dot the Duck. Here are some umbrella handles, a tree, and a house, and Pinky's umbrella. See if you can color them just like they are in the pictures above. Eh, oh, ah. I want the scary clown umbrella. Johnny Morris tells you about animals. The hip of Potamus. The hip of Potamus is often called a hip of. He is a giant pig who lives in a hot country called South Africa. Okay. A hippo is very big and heavy, and his skin is so tough and hard that even fierce lions cannot hurt him. Before baby is born, mummy and daddy choose a home near the river. When baby grows up, mummy teaches him how to walk in the river under the water. Soon he will be able to stay under the water for nearly ten minutes before coming up to breathe. Can you see the little birds in the picture? They are egrets who hop about happily on hippos' backs. Hippos spend more of their time in the water than out of it. They love to cool off in the water when the sun is very hot in the afternoon. In the picture below, two hippos are running to the river to hide under the water because something has frightened them. Two crocodiles are hurrying into the water too. Here is Baby Hippo having a ride on his mummy's back as she crosses the river. Would you like to join up the dots with your pencil to finish this picture of a hip of Potamus? Someone's already beaten us to it. Next week, Johnny Morris will tell you about the zebra. The funny adventures of Leslie and Peter, the stars of BBC's Cracker Jack. Leslie Crowther, Peter Glaze. You can tell it's going to be funny because it says so in the title. Leslie was very busy one day. He was going to fix a shelf in the wall, or to the wall. 
So he got his hammer and chisel and began banging. This is fun, thought Judy, the little girl from next door, while Peter began taking cakes from going. a cupboard. You don't say. His voice we is cracking. so loud, it gives voice up to the moon. But Leslie did not know that there was a water pipe in the wall until his chisel pierced it and a stream of water shot straight at him. Oof! What's that? He cried. Peter was surprised. He didn't want his cakes to get wet. So Judy held her hand over the hole to stop the water pouring out, while Leslie went off for his tools to mend the pipe, the pipe. Then Peter got on with his job, putting mountains of tasty cream on to his cakes. Yum, yummy, said Judy. Me, I have one of those lovely cakes, Uncle Peter, <laughs> asked Judy. Of course, help yourself said Peter. But when Judy tried to take a cake, she found that she couldn't reach the plate without taking her hand away from the wall. But Judy just had to have a cake. They looked so loverly. She reached out to get one, and the other hand came away from the wall. Out shot the water again, just as Leslie was returning with his tools, and... Splash! The water struck Leslie full in the face, and he sank to the floor, dead. Why did you take your hand away from the wall, Judy? He asked. She only wanted a cake, said Peter. You have one. They're called cream splashes. Next week, Leslie and Peter have fun on a slide. Cracker Jack fun with Leslie Crowther, the tree, the doll, the chimbalies, the window, and the picture belong to the doll's house on the right. Will you draw them there, just like they are, in the little picture below? <laughs> Anal bum cover. Cracker Jack fun. Corgi toys are go. Yeah, the Bedford Tipper truck and the Volkswagen breakdown truck. The magic roundabout. Flower fertilizer. He's carrying a little sprinkle can of doo doo. Brian! <laughs> Brain eating leaves! Can you see that naughty snail, Brian, at the front of the picture? He always seems to go out of his way to annoy Dougal, doesn't he? Here he is just finishing eating the leaves from Dougal's favorite flower. You can see how cross Dougal is feeling. Florence said, I can see all this is I can see this is all going to end in a big squabble unless we can do something to put the flower right again. So Florence and the other children set to work. Florence brought some fertilizer and water to put on the flower to make the leaves grow again. Basil and Paul drew some leaves on green paper and cut them out, ready to stick on to the flower to make it look all right, just for the time being. And clever Rosalie knitted some green leaves with wool. She said wool lasted better than paper. So Dougal should be happy again soon, shouldn't he? Can you see Zebedee spraying the flowers and Mr. Rusty and Mr. Mac Henry cleaning the magic roundabout? You will enjoy hearing next week about Dougal and the magic feather. These objects shown here, hidden in the picture above, when you found them, you can copy named and dotted lines. Look at these idiots. They have no idea what they're doing. Leaf, scissors, pencil, wool, spray ore. Ralph Harrison, Coogee Bear. Coogee Bear is Rolf's naughty little bear pet from Australia. It was bedtime and Rolf was saying, You really shouldn't chew that flannel as you go to sleep, Coogee. I'm sure it must make your lips sore or something. But Coogee loved chewing the flannel, and he wasn't a bit pleased when Rolf took it away from him. Now come along, said Rolf. I'm only doing it for your own good. But while Rolf hung up the flannel to dry, can you see what naughty Coogee did? He just started chewing the bedspread. I can't help chewing something, he said. So poor Rolf gave the flannel back to Coogee. If you must chew something, it is better to chew the flannel than to spoil the bedspread by chewing it, he sighed. Naughty Coogee! Next week, Coogee Bear plays a prank when Rolf tidies up. Finish the drawing! He drew an aeroplane, and Coogee Bear rubbed it out. 
all at sea with Captain Ruff and the jolly crew of the Matilda, Captain Ruff, Edwin the May. <laughs> They're still on that island. <laughs> Captain Ruff and the crew of the Matilda were feeling very homesick. We have been on this desert island too long already, said the captain. How can we get home? Nobody knew how, so Nipper offered him a coconut. This did not console Captain Ruff. I don't want any coconut, he cried. I'm tired of coconuts and bananas to eat. And then Edwin the mate came running to them and cried. Good news, shipmates, I got the Matilda afloat. Of course, the crew could hardly believe their ears, but it was true. Edwin has, had managed to back their ship off the rocks where it had been stuck for so long, and soon Nipper was piping them aboard with a bosun's whistle. And so, here we see I'm our jolly friends mountain. sailing for home. Aren't they all happy? Nice to have known you, Tim! Shouts Nipper to Tim Turtle. If we sail this way again, the Count will call on you. Ta ta! Now, wasn't that a wonderful adventure? Next week, you will meet another new friend in TV Toyland. Oh, this is the finale of All at Sea with Captain Ruff. Dougal on his own. Oh, he's opening the package and there's a hat inside. He doesn't want it, he wears the box instead. Num Num and his funny family. Num Num, cousin copycat, cousin ginger pusscat, cousin never shut the door pusscat, drag a chair pusscat, knitting pusscat, sleepy pusscat, cousin never wipe her feet pusscat, cousin never hang his coat up pusscat, daddy pusscat, hot mummy pusscat. Hot mummy pusscat is not in this episode. Grandma makes clothes for teddy bears. Num Num pusscat has a grandma who just loves knitting. Grandma Knitting Pusscat, they call her. She sits by the fire nearly all day long, knitting and knitting and knitting. Clickety clack, twiddle the wool, clickety clack, twiddle the wool. She goes with her needles. Have you a grandma who likes knitting? Anyway, it so happened one day that Grandma Knitting Pusscat had knitted enough jumpers for Num Num, and enough jumpers for his little brother Dragachair, and enough jumpers for all the rest of the family, too. There seemed nothing left to knit. Grandma sat dolefully in her chair. I fear lost without me knitting, she said. Does your grandma ever say things like that? Well, kind little Num Num didn't like seeing his grandma unhappy. So he thought hard, and then he had an idea. We don't need any clothes knitted, he said, but our teddy bears do. And he and Dragachair fetched their four teddy bears and gave them to Grandma. She had a lovely, happy time knitting outfits for them. If you look at the big picture, you can see the clothes she knitted. <laughs> Watch me scare Fred out of his balls. Watch me scare Fred out of his balls. Aren't they all nice in their new clothes? How come? You can share the fun next week when Ginger Pusscat comes to tea. Oh no! Who is this? We got a new character. Tommy Trouble! <laughs> this is Tommy. His mummy calls him Tommy Trouble. For he just cannot help causing trouble. Tommy does not mean to cause trouble. He did not mean to when he found a frog in the garden. I'll take you indoors, froggy, he said. But of course, a froggy in the kitchen did not please Tommy's mummy. She came in as Tommy was teaching it to jump over a pensile. Tommy put that frog back in the garden, she cried. Frogs do not belong in the house. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mummy, I did not know, said Tommy. He dropped the frog out of the window. As you can see, there's a garden seat under the window, and on that seat was Daddy's hat. The froggy dropped straight into the hat. Daddy had been busy in the garden, and he came along a few minutes later with a box of vegetables for Mummy. So that's where I left me at. He said, seeing it. I'll put it on before I forget where it is again. And he did. 
Then Daddy came into the kitchen to give Mummy the vegetables. Tommy was there reading his comic. And nothing moved until suddenly Daddy's hat began to wobble about on his head. Me hat's come alive, said Pride Daddy. Inari Fox, thank you for the raid. Yep. Yep. Probably the hardest batch I ever had in my life. But I he whipped like off his hat and Tommy shouted, Daddy's brought me frog in. You turn the tables on Return me. Tommy, it belongs outside! Scolded Mummy. Poor Daddy now. was in trouble, to thanks to I Tommy. Now you see why I Tommy is necessary. called Tommy Trouble. Next week, around, Tommy Trouble will be here to make you laugh again. And you treat me out of what rightfully mine, that's when I get angry. Oh now no, I George and Sandra are still here. I'm issuing a challenge to you, Motley Cruz. Get in the ring with me. George and Sandra time, play at school. I'm Sandra, George, Billy, George. George. One day, when Billy and Jillian arrived to play at schools, the weather was very wet. They both had to wear raincoats and wellingtons and carry umbrellas. Teacher Sandra opened the door to let them in. Now let me see your teeth. Give me a nice... Now, wet days are always busy days at school. There are so many extra clothes to be attended to. Here is Headmaster George putting the umbrellas to drain in the sink as one does. While Sandra helped Jillian off with her wellingtons. Then Sandra pegged the Wellingtons in their proper pairs so that they wouldn't get muddled up. And Billy and Jillian hung their coats on their pegs. They pretended that the knobs on a chair were cloakroom pegs. Are we ready to start lessons at last then? Asked Teacher Sandra. But they weren't. My socks are wet too, said Jillian. If I sit in wet socks, I shall catch a cold. Don't worry, <laughs> said Teacher Sandra. <laughs> Teacher Sandra took off the socks, and Headmaster George hung them on the radiator to dry. And meanwhile, Billy had fetched a pair of his slippers. He pretended they were school plimsolls for Jillian to wear. Then, just as they seemed ready for lessons at last, Sandra noticed that it was playtime, and Headmaster George brought in the milk and biscuits. Playing at rainy days in school looks fun, doesn't it? Why don't you try it? Reading time! The of a Drew, Billy and to the... They had fun on the then Billy, was lucky at the shy, and Jillian won a playing hoopla. THE MAGIC BOOMERANG! When the magic boomerang flies through the air, everything except the thrower stops moving. Tom Fumbleton and his friend Wombat had been to the circus. As they came away, they talked about what they had seen. It was jolly good, wasn't it? Tom said, and Wombat agreed. Especially that acrobat on the trapeze, he said. The acrobat in the circus had done some very daring things as he swung from a trapeze. Now, on the way home, Wombat saw a loop of rope hanging down outside a loft above the store. And as he ran towards it, he called Tom. Watch me do what the circus acrobat did, Tom! Wombat cried, reaching up and catching hold of the rope. But just then, Tom saw a big lorry coming along the next street close to the corner. Wombat will hit the lorry! He thought, that's a blombie lorry. Very rough looking artwork in this one. So Tom drew the magic boomerang from his belt and threw it. And can you remember what happens when the magic boomerang is flying? Nothing! Except the thrower can move. It's magic now stopped everything, except Tom. The lorry was stopped just before it could strike against Wombat, and Wombat himself was held still in midair. 
Now I have enough time to save Wombat, thought Tom as he ran forward. Then he pulled Ro Wombat off the rope. Tom had just brought his friend down to the ground when the magic boomerang flew back to him, and everything was able to start moving again. Gosh, gasped Wombat as the lorry sped by. I nearly had an accident. Next week, more jolly new friends for you to meet in TV Toyland. Oh, is this the end of Magic Boomerang? Is this the final chapter in the Magic Boomerang saga? The final and most poorly drawn yeah, chapter. Nice mess you've got me into. Fiend. So yeah, we have one more issue of this left, and then TV Toyland merges with a different, uh, different comic magazine. All right, back to our game. Hata! Good. There's, there's the living fire there we have to avoid. Cheese and smell. All right, we gotta take more pictures of Curly now. Curly faded from existence. By his mouth and vocal cords with a 3D printer, it allowed them to produce a single sound. This is a very unhinged mini game here. Wing wing. I got a good mask of curly. Mum. All right, go go get him, curly. You're the powerhouse of the Stooges. Oh, I thought curly was dead there. Oh, he is dead. I can't imagine Messy Camp candies being like any worse than than the vomit vomit chemical containing Hershey's that we got here. Oh, he fell! Go get him, Curly. Yeah, we got lots of gross food additives that are illegal everywhere else. So 
Oh, jeez! He's got the combo! Whoa! Choke slammed off the of Sheridan. You better have saved the receipt. Yeah. Oh, not again. I was out with, uh... I had a jacked up neck that I was dealing with. Necks and backs and, like... Knees and shoulders should not exist. I have the neck grot. Hey there we go. We're making progress now. There we go, we got almost full health too for for this this horror show of a stage. Okay, he didn't grab the ladder again. He did. I jumped into the ladder. You saw that. You saw that. Curly did not grab the ladder. Curly did not grab the ladder. The bizarre side view ladders that are in this game. Okay, he grabbed it that time. Good! Unavoidable damage there. Success! Oh no, there's more!
Good. Googly moogly, what are we gonna do about this? Oh! No! Oh! The curly mirror match. Curly mirror match. Yeah, play Pop Goes the Weasel for both of them. the bomb <laughs> this is a bomb Pink potions give you health at the end of a stage. As far as I can tell, there are no health pickups that you can immediately use during a stage. There we go. I have beaten Curly to death. Durant in a helicopter swoops down at you, firing his grenade launcher. Avoiding the explosions, you grab a hanging rope for the ride of your life. This is going to be impossible, isn't it? This is a bomb! Good job, Dark Man. Oh. Kevin is the default high score name. Not very good, is it? How did that bird hit me? Okay, those items down there. Those items down there, if you try to pick them up, you will die. It's like, don't try to pick up anything except stuff that is guaranteed to be 100% safe. Potions don't work instantly, no. Dark Man does not drink them until the end of a stage. You have no, uh, no way of increasing your health during a stage.
I swear some of these patterns it throws are, are unavoidable. Oh, this stage is different for some reason. It's different because we gotta start over now. Throw all our dark men away. Let's start over anew. I remember Nintendo Power gave this game a pretty big push. This game got the Nintendo power push. Yeah, we can look at some of the other ports. Yeah, we can do that. Well, we managed to, uh... We managed to assassinate Curly, at least. Yeah, let's look at some of the other ports. Uh... What other systems did this come out on? I know there's, like, Amiga. We can look at Amiga. Amiga, Atari ST, Amstrad. All right, all games. D is for Darkman. Darkman! Oh, it's a beat em up! Oh, boy. We're not gonna cheat at Darkman on the Amiga. Oh, Darkman. Cool! <laughs> Graphics by James Clark and Mr. X. This is some Amiga music, all right. Ooh. All right. Ooh! For the first stage of his revenge, Darkman must record sufficient physiogenomic data on Durant. Oh, oh no, what am I doing? Where is he? What is this nonsense and madness? How? Darkman seeking revenge on those who disfigured him sets out to acquire the ill-gotten gains of Robert G. Durant the murdered plant. Uh oh. Oh. Oh no, it's unhinged. It's unhinged. Ugh. Yeah, cool. The adventures of Lolo, you better have saved the receipt. Okay, it's. Whoa. It's up to jump, but only when you're at the, the top of the screen. Oh, Duffy's! Good. This is gameplay.
Uh-oh. This dude's got a briefcase. That's my briefcase. I got the money in the bank briefcase. I can cash it in for a title shot whenever I want. Oh! Darkman died! He died of poverty! Dino! This game is mighty. Not quite as mighty as the NES one that we played earlier, where you have to uh, impersonate and assassinate each of the Stooges. Well, this, is, this is pretty good. It's got lots of gaming in it. I gotta clump all these dudes together. There we go. Oh, I made it! His plan underway, Darkman sets out to procure! Uh... Oh, this is awful. Darkman is discovered before his plan is half grown. His fiancée, Julie, is seized by the evil Strack, and Darkman is cornered in his lair. Fired by grief, he fights with unhuman foe. Oh no, they're platforming. These are good gaming noises. Climb the ladder, Darkman. Mortis, thank you for the raid. Playing good game here. <laughs> Puppet Master Community Raid. Uh, what does Darkman do now? Can't go that way. Oh, there we go. Platforming. This is a nightmare.
Hmm. This isn't as good as the one on NES. This one's... This one's kind of bad. I'm not enjoying this one very much. I'm not enjoying this one very much. The Game Boy one's a beat-em-up. Good. Just eat all the fire. Dark man, you fool, climb the ladder. Smash! What is he doing? Oh, he has a he has a little back kick move that he does sometimes. I'm not quite sure if this is a good game or not. The goodness of this game might be a bit in question. Maybe we'll play the one on Spectrum or Commodore 64 next. made it. I didn't collect the E, though, because it looked impossible. Oh, time to get up. Let's, let's defeat these guys first. I can see the smasher 
just off the edge of the screen here. Good. Good. Uh, Biffo. Okay. Uh, let's load up the Commodore 60. They're not the Commodore 16. Commodore 64. Commodore 16 is the Pink Panther machine. He was Ben Grimm all along. All right. Uh, D, D, A. Dark. Dark man. Oh, here we go. We're going to have a good time now. Oh, whoopee! Hiya, folks! <laughs> 28! Oh, man! Oh, man, this has 28 different cheats installed into it. To activate the built-in cheat mode, wait until the high scores table appears, then type Baby Axeman. The border will turn dark gray and you won't die at the end of your energy. Also, you'll be allowed to go to the next level immediately by hitting spacebar. In program cheat mode only? Uh... I don't want any cheat. No, no, it... No, we're not going to cheat at Darkman. No. Leave me be. Starting level one. Who dares? Now who dares to doubt about the quality of arms releases anymore would better make more than tw plus 28p versions or bow in front of us and keep silent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It's thinking, I hope. Whoa! Darkman! Today's top Darkman! Andy, Dave, Jason, Pete, and Stuart. Level 1, Darkman seeking revenge on those who figure him of Santa did drive a tuba. End of line. Oh! Pick up the, the money, Darkman. There's a money there. Okay. Oh. Oh, maybe... Oh, dog! Well, this, well, this seems all right. He's punching waiters. Oh, dog! Dog! Oh, no! What happened to him? It was his most fearsome disguise ever.
Oh no, a ninja! Punching him makes him disappear. Oh. Let's try this again. Oh, he's got that move. If you push down in the button, he will do that. It doesn't seem to really do much more than his regular punch. Ow. Oh, man. It's your second birthday. If you get a tummy ache and you moan and groan and woe, don't forget we told you so. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! <laughs> Make a wish, dear, and blow out the candle. Here they go! Here they go! <laughs> you got to be shitting me, dog. Dog! Man. Dog! Dog! Oh, someone should do something about all these shurikens in town. Oh. This game is messed up. Let's, uh... Hmm. Let's, let's load up the Spectrum one. Uh, let's see, load snapshot, games, games, D, Dan Dare, Dandy, Danger Mouse, Darkman! Whoa! Uh, Finley Dog, Andy Spleen, Noli Babe, Lizzie Moolah. Uh, Kempston. Ooh! Darkman seeking Ravange on those who disfigured him sets out to acquire the ill-gotten gains of Robert G. Durant to further his plans. End of line! Oh, no. Darkman is tiny in this one. <laughs> He's so much smaller than everyone else. He's just a little guy. He's a baby. He's a little baby, Darkman. No! Oh, no! Oh, 
Ugh. <laughs> Oh, we're doomed. We're doomed. Duke Donuts, thank you for the raid. Tell you what, why don't we go to another house, okay? Yeah, this isn't a good one. This isn't a good one. Thank you for the raid. We were playing Darkman. Oh yes, Biffo's game rating system. It's just very simple. Very simple. Also, also, the Biffo Bits counter there. Every 1,000 bits gets an episode of, of uh, Biffo's retro reviews. So if we get uh, if we get up to 10,000 there, I'll do the uh, the game rating system, and then I'll do another new one. We're playing Darkman. Hello, chum. Welcome to Biffo's Retro Reviews. Uh, He's going over that cliff. Ah! Uh, let's see. 70 bits of boy. 70 bits of boy. Oh boy, here we go. Oh, a scam train is close. Shrek Donuts. A scam train! Oh boy. Alright, here we go. I'm taking you in. I'm taking you in. Biffo's retro reviews. Uh, okay, well, listen to the, the game rating system explained first. Oh, Space Mister! It's your bongo hey, birthday you also. Let's, uh... I remember that. Here they go! The shouty, as the kids call it these days. Folks, here's Wild Bill Ass. Here's Wild yeah, Bill Ass. I'm here. I heard you, Randy Bryant. You made some big promises. You talk tall. You talk you tall. You here on television in front of all these folks, and you said that I was going down. Well, you gotta get I them don't shouties. think you're big enough and bad enough and mean enough to put me down. You to can put try, me down. You can't do it. Those are fighting words. I'm declaring war. Me and you, brother, right in the center of the ring, war! Now let's go to the ring. <laughs> He's going over that cliff! Ah! Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Speed racer screamer. All right, here we go. Biffo is gonna explain his rating system, and then we'll get a new one. Hello, chums. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Biffo's Retro Review, where I review the best and worst games from the past. Today, I'm going to explain my game rating system which is very simple and easy to understand. Trust me, you'll love it. Trust me, My you'll love it. My game rating system has five categories. Graphics, sound, gameplay, smell, and cheese. Each category has a score from one to 10, where one is bad and 10 is good. But there's a twist. The scores are not numbers, they are words. For example, a score of one in graphics means rubbish. Rubbish. A score of five means nay, nay, and a score of ten means wow. A score of one in sound means quiet. A score of five means loud, and a score of ten means deafening. A score of one in gameplay means boring. 
A score of five means fun, and a score of ten means addictive. A score of one in smell means stinky. A score of five means fresh, and a score of ten means delicious. And finally, a score of one in cheese means moldy. A score of five means tasty, and a score of ten means cheesy. But wait, there's but more. Wait, there's more. The scores are not fixed. They change depending on the game genre. For example, a platformer game needs good graphics and gameplay, but not so much sound and smell. A horror game needs good sound and smell, but not so much graphics and cheese. And a puzzle game needs good cheese and gameplay, but not so much graphics and sound. So, depending on the genre, I adjust the scores accordingly. For example, if a platformer game has a score of 5 in graphics, I bump it up to 7. If a horror game has a score of 5 in sound, I bump it up to 8. And if a puzzle game has a score of 5 in cheese, I bump it up to 9. But wait, there's even more. But wait, there's even more. The scores more. are not We're final. The they are affected by my mood. For example, if I'm feeling control. happy, no, no. I add They're 1 point now. to each score. I can't if I'm anything. feeling sad, I subtract Your one will. point from each score. <laughs> and if I'm feeling angry, I flip each score upside down. For example, if a game has a score of 7 in graphics, and I'm feeling happy, I make it 8. <laughs> if I'm feeling sad, I make it 6. Mm. And if I'm feeling angry, I make it 4. But wait, there's still more. There's the still scores more. are not absolute. They are relative to each other. <laughs> For example, if a game has the same score in all categories, I give it an extra point in each category. If a game has the highest score in one category and the lowest score in another category, I swap them around. And if a game has the same score as another game in any category, I flip a coin to decide which one is better. But wait, there's one wait. last thing. The scores are not independent. They are linked to each other. For example, if a game has a high score in graphics and sound, <laughs> but a low score in gameplay and smell, I multiply them together <laughs> to get the final score. If a game has a high score in gameplay and cheese, but a low score in graphics and sound, I divide them by each other to get the final score. <laughs> and if a game has an average score in all categories, I add them all together oh, to get boy, the final oh, score. <laughs> so, there you so, have it. There Chum. you have it. That's my game rating system in a nutshell. It's very simple and easy to understand. Trust me, you'll love it. And if you don't love it, well, tune in next time for another episode of Biffo's Retro Reviews. Bye for now. Hello. All right. Let's see. What one will we get next? Hello, chums. Welcome to another episode of Biffo's Retro Reviews, <laughs> where I play some of the most obscure and challenging games from the past. Today, I'm going to try my luck with Super Mega Death Ninja 3, Revenge of the Shurikens. This game was released in 1992 for the Zix Spectrum. And Zix it's widely Spectrum. regarded as one of the hardest games ever made. Let's see how far I can get, shall we? All right, here we go. The game starts with a cutscene of a ninja master telling me that I have to infiltrate the enemy base and rescue his daughter from the evil shogun. He gives me a bunch of shurikens and a sword and tells me to be careful. Sounds simple enough, right? Wrong. Wrong. As soon as the cutscene ends... <laughs> I'm greeted by a barrage of bullets, lasers, rockets, and flying ninjas. How am I supposed to dodge all this? I try to run and jump, but I get hit by everything. <laughs> My health bar is already empty and I'm dead. Game I'm over. Dead. What? That's not fair. How can they expect me to survive that? Let me try again. Maybe I can use my shurikens to clear a path. Oh, here we go. I throw a shuriken at the first enemy, but it misses and hits a wall. The wall explodes and falls on me. I'm dead. Game I'm over. dead. What? That's ridiculous. How can a wall explode from a shuriken? 
Let me try again. Maybe I can use my sword to deflect the bullets. Okay, here we go. I swing my sword at the first bullet, but it bounces back and hits me in the face. I'm dead. Game over. What? That's absurd. How can a bullet bounce back from a sword? Let me try again. Maybe I can just hide behind something. It's the wall, brother. Okay, hey, wall. here we go. That's the wall. I look brother. for something to hide behind, but there's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing. The screen is full of enemies and projectiles. There's nowhere to go. I'm dead. Game over. What? That's impossible. How can there be nothing to hide behind? This game is impossible. It's unfair. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. It's absurd. It's... It's, uh, 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 that's it. I've had enough. <laughs> I quit. This game is rubbish. It's garbage. It's trash. It's, it's, uh, 16 months. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching, chumps. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And tune in next time for another episode of Biffo's Retro Reviews. Until then, stay retro. Oh boy, we we got a uh, we got enough bits coming in here. MP eighty three, thank you for sixteen months. We got enough bits coming in here. We get another one. Shall we hand pick a good one? Oh, here's a here's a good one. This one's an all time classic. Hello, chums. Welcome to another episode of Biffo's Retro Reviews, where I play old games and have a laugh. Today's episode is sponsored by Raid, Shadow Legends, the most immersive and realistic mobile RPG ever. Raid RPG. has over 600 champions to collect and customize, RPG. each with their own skills and abilities. You can join a clan, fight in PV paddles, or PV explore paddles. the massive campaign mode. <laughs> And the best part is, it's free to play. It's free Just to play. Just use my link in the description to download Raid today and get a special welcome pack with 100,000 silver 50 gems, 10 mystery shards, and a free epic champion, Jotun, the world eater. Jotun. Now let's get started with today's <laughs> retro review. I'm going to play. Wait a minute. What's this? A mystery shard. Let's see what I get. Maybe it's a legendary champion. Come on, come on. Oh, it's just a rare. Well, that's not too bad. Let's try another one. Maybe this time I'll get lucky. Maybe come on, this time. Come on. <laughs> oh, another rare. Well, that's okay. I can use them to upgrade my other champions. Let's try one more. Just one more. Come on, come on. Wow, look at that. It's, <laughs> it's, I don't know who it is, but it looks awesome. <laughs> Let's see what it can do. Okay, chums, I'm back. Sorry for the long break. I just got a bit carried away with Raid. It's so addictive. <laughs> I've spent all my mystery shards and got some amazing champions. Look at this one. It's a legendary. <laughs> it has a sword and a shield and a helmet and a cape. And, oh, wait, I'm out of silver. How can I upgrade it? I need more silver. Maybe I can buy some with gems. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> idea. Let me just check how many gems I have left. Okay, chums, I'm back again. Sorry for another long break. I just had to buy some more gems with real money. Don't worry, it's not a lot. Just a few quid here and there. It's worth it for Raid. It's such a great game. Look at this champion I just got. It's another legendary. It has wings and horns and claws and fire and... Oh, wait. I'm out of gems again. <laughs> How can I buy more silver? I need more silver. Maybe I can sell some of my old games. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Let me just grab my retro collection. Oh, no. Okay, chums. <laughs> I'm back for the last time. Sorry for the longest break ever. 
I just had to sell some of my old games for cash. Don't worry, it's not a lot. Just a few classics here and there. It's the best game ever. Look at this I champion I just this. got. It's another legendary. It has. It has. I don't know what it has, but it looks amazing. Let me just check how much cash I have left. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm broke. I've spent all my money on raid. I've sold all my games for raid. I've ruined my life for raid. What have I done? What have I done? I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. And please send me some money. Please, 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 please. This episode was sponsored by Raid. Saddle Legends. Download Saddle Raid Legends. today and get a special welcome pack with 100,000 silver, 50 gems, 10 mystery shards, and a free epic champion, Jotun. The Jotun. world leader, Raid. Shadow Legends. The ultimate mobile raid. Play now. Hello, chum. There we go. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good one. Money for oh Biffo. My God! What happened to my car? Money oh for my Biffo. Where Thank you, MP83. That's one of my favorite ones. Go All right. Biffo. Kill him if he spends it on raid. Shadow <laughs> Legends. Chubbo Legends. Joe Tun. Uh. Let's go back to the NES Darkman now that we've had a little bit of a break. Oh, Biffo, you're sitting there stuffing your your sandwich down your gob. Uh, let's go back to Darkman here. <clears throat> or we could play Defenders of Dynatron City. We could play that. That's a powerful game. This is a powerful game. Yeah, this, this sounds powerful already. Whoa! Oh yeah, this looks good. It sounds good, too. Jet Headstrong, choose this hero. Yes, press start. No, press select. Uh, Radium Dog. Radium Dong. Ms. Megawatt. Okay, we'll be this guy because he looks the stupidest. Robot Rampage, newest defender vows a meat mechanical menace. Chapter 1, Crimmy in the Streets. Your goal, destroy all robots in the streets, collect interior items, destroy the blimp, and collect supercharger. Press start to play. Oh no. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Uh <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> uh <laughs> I think I might have picked a bad character. Jet Headstrong doesn't seem to be very good. <laughs> oh 
shops are open. Let's let's go shopping. Spend money in mall, says the hint. Value 5.00. Whoa! <laughs> oh no, there's a robot in here. I cannot hit them. Oh, there we go, I got them. Food item! It is worth 5.00 as well. What is in the get it and get out store? Oh, a robot! Food item. Ugh. 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 Good for me. I'm there somehow. Got him! Oh! Music! Yeah! Uh-oh. Robot activity detected. Ah. Got some problems. <laughs> yeah, that's that's this guy's superpower. Is he has a detachable rocket head? Let's go to Matt's meats.
power item. Oh no, what are, th oh. Oh no. I wish I hadn't done that. <laughs> I wish I hadn't done that. Oh, we're this guy now. He does not possess the power of flight though, so he might be bad. He might not be a good character. Oh yeah, Th this guy kind of sucks. We shouldn't be him. Whoa! Okay, we might have found the good character. Yeah, I think we might have found the good character. can blow up the cars. Oh. Fully destructible environments. The adventures of Lolo, you better save the machine. This is a good game because it's got lots of problems. Okay, let's let's try the other character. Let's try the monkey. Doesn't seem to be very good. <laughs> yeah, let's not be him. The monkey is not a very good character. going south. I think. This map doesn't seem to work the way one might expect it to work. Thank you. 
Oh, there we go. All right, let's call in the good character. Yes, yes, those are those are very good candies. I am a big fan of of black licorice. It's one of my favorite uh, gross candies. Everyone else seems to hate. Message from DDCHQ Blimp sighted on C Street. Power up, destroy it, and get the supercharger. hit these guys, so I'm leaving. Uh-oh, he's trapped somehow. Can't use that. Who can? Maybe the monkey is able to use that. No. The map says the clue. <laughs> we got a comic. now. <laughs> Maniac Mansion's a good game. Time to move up and saunter about. Some 
They are comfy slippers. I am completely lost. I have no idea how how movement in this game works. Uh oh. I got a food item. I can't use that. Yeah, this, this map is messed up. Go to the book store. Dynatron Dollars. Let's go into the building that says drugs. Not allowed to use the bottle of drugs. Elsewhere, I guess. Yeah, it seems to... <clears throat> it seems to, like, change your... Yeah, there's your... There's... It shows what direction north is here. Yeah. Mega Mall Grand Opening Mall of Tomorrow opens today! Your goal, destroy Robosaurs, shop for special items, destroy Atom Ed, and collect Supercharger. What? Our one dude is still trapped. Dogs and frogs. Whoa! Seventy bits, oh boy! Seventy bits, oh boy! Uh, let's 
So let's pick this guy. Folks, Bulldozer and Gypsy. Ricky Rouge. He does not seem to be, uh... Oh, wait, there he goes. Food item. A B's CDs. So I'm gonna tell you something. You put your name on the dotted line, mister, because I'm hot and I'm mad right now, boy, because you're a coward. You're a lily livered, yelling gutty coward, boy. So you come on down and you accept the challenge, mister. We'll be right back. The fiber barn. <laughs> Trapped. Oh, stop whining, bundle. Trapped. Oh. All my men got generated. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah. We can go back to Darkman. This is a good game. A bubbling crew. <laughs> oh yeah, Dash Galaxy. Yeah, let's play Dash Galaxy. We played Darkman earlier. We were able to defeat Curly. We assassinated Curly. And then we got run over by a truck. This is Dash Galaxy. From back of the box. Oh no no no! Seizure lights. Where nobody's normal. Doctor Mayhem's atomic experiments produced six oh, really cool superheroes. <laughs> really cool we'll superheroes. Your way through sewers full of gatamorphs and loogie hawks. Streets sprawling with rabid robots. You don't have any bombs. This is not a bomb, Billy. We're zorbing. We're zorbing on the, the tramp of lean. <laughs> Don't get flim flammed. Finished that board. It's got Succobon. Oh! 
It's, at the very least, it has, like, high jumps and long jumps. Because that's an important thing to have in your, your unhinged NES game. This is the sort of game that almost feels like it's unlicensed. Like, it almost feels like a Color Dream sort of thing. Barely licensed. This game is weird. <laughs> Might have to listen to the Biffo's retro reviews where he talks about his his special gaming terms. Is this as high as the, the Zorber will absorb us? I think it is. Slurp slew! There we go. Look at that. We have we have cleared level zero. And it sucks all the oxygen out of our lungs in preparation for the next area. Oh, this one takes place in Super Mario Land! Issue number zero. It's hard to breathe in here. No air. Oh, 
I think they might have tried to do some sort of, like, flickery palette blending effect on his suit. Like, for whatever reason, they decided he must, MUST be this particular shade of light blue that the, the NES color palette does not contain. It can be no other way. That thing's gonna hit me. Oh no, it didn't! Surprisingly lenient collision detection. Comic time! You know what that means. That means we had to look at Desperate Dan. Oh, it's one of those games that plays the music while it's paused so you can enjoy it on your own terms. Alright, let's get the music ready. Okay, I'm standing on it. Now, what do you want me to do? Compilation Desperate Dan. I think this is the one. You've got to get up to oh, the boy. The if you're going to try to fool me. We're getting close. Singing Cowboy. Sure is peaceful on the prairie. What's up? Is it a prairie fire? This is Bungle. This is just Bungle right here. No, something far worse. Dan is singing. I'm an old cowhand, yahoo! Plunk, twang. Early molt this year! Blast of sound! Nope, just Dan air in his tonsils. I ain't never heard a wolf pack oh so loud. Taint a wolf pack. Tis Dan practicing his singing. Woo! <laughs> Shucks, a bust a string. I should have known better than to use a rusty barbed wire. <laughs> Soon get a new string. A chomp. Crunch. No, oh, give me a hoe! Stop, thief! No, hold on there, partner. The sheriff's talking to ya. Pang. Thanks, Dan. He stole my silver star. Glad to help, sheriff. How come you're holding your pants up? My star was attached to my braces when he pinched it. Desperate Dan has killed this guy. He has X's for eyes. That means he's dead. Sorry about your banjo, Dan. I'll do some buskin and get it mended. Oh, give me a home. Grand ol' opera. Q here. Oh, give us a rest. We can't stand Dan hollering. Tisk! Gulp! No cue, no money! Say, Dan, I'll give you money to stay as far away from my place as possible. Gee, thanks, Mr. Manager. Sniff, now I'll never get a chance to fulfill my boyhood oh, ambition. Right, right. I do need a longer one. Ever since I was a kid, I've been keen on music. There's horrid little baby Dan with his... his diaper with an enormous butt crack. Just all wedged right up in there. Desperate Dan, singing at cow poke. One day, I hope to be a singing cowboy on Molly Martin's country and western show. Oh 
boy! My big chance! Jeremiah Jones, agent. Singer wanted for Grand Ole Opera. Okay, Dan, what you gonna sing? I'll give you a bit of the crystal chandelier. Ooh, the crystal chandelier! Gulp! Yo, sure, gave me a bit o oh, the crystal chandelier! Crash, tinkle. Oh, shucks. Don't phone me, Dan, I'll phone you! Ain't ma singing party enough? Dan, as a singer, you'd make a good hog caller! Oh, I tried that once. Deafened all the hogs in Cactus County! Sweet! Reckon I'll practice with my old harmonica! Peppers! Mm, pepper bowl! It's his bowl where he keeps his peppers. It's easy to play! A suck blow suck! Hot peppers! Suck! Oh, 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 Chew! Darn it, chewed right through my harmonica! That gate would make a mighty fine harp. Open them pearly gates! Twangle! I'm free! Now to toss that noisy Jasper into the next county, thinks the angry bull. Moof! I thought it was a man! It must be a rock! Dull thud as it headbutts his arse. Stop shoving, little doggie. It's like button the wall of the Grand Canyon! Then Rancher Buckboard appears. Come and see my prize bull! Finest head of horns you ever saw! What's happened to my bull, Dan? Ha <laughs> ha! Soon fix that. Just straighten him out. How's that? Even worse! That's the best I can do. I gotta practice my music. Oh, he's ruined the bull. It's gonna have to be put down now. In the music store. I want one of your fiddles, Elma! Sure, Dan, try this Stradivaricos! Gotta grip it under my chin. Tarnation, it's busted! Crunch. That fiddle's over a hundred years old, Dan! Good job it wasn't a new one. <laughs> Now there's a real downsized fiddle! Double bass. Saw scrape. Hi you bile them cabbage down! A tarantula! Unhinged. Horn hogs! How did that happen? Saw! This guy's angry at Desperate Dan, but he's powerless to do anything because Desperate Dan is invincible. I'm going back to Philly Delphi! Shucks, how can I practice my music when the music shop's closed down? By the rippling waters over the Rio Grande! I stood with my banjo in my hand! Wah! Bloosh! It's getting so a fella can't get a quiet drink round here! Stuck is the sound his foot is making. Best get the carpenter to saw me free! Snort! I always wanted to sing on the stage. Cactusville Opera House. I can give you a job singing on the stage, Dan. Gee, thanks, Mr. Uh... Fargo, son. Will S. Fargo. Follow me! Well, the theater's over here! Will S. Fargo fires his shotgun guard. You're taken over as guard on the Dead Lost stage, Dan! Oh, the Dead Lost stage is rolling on over the hill! 
Meanwhile, the middle-aged brothers are awaiting, slightly older than the younger brothers. Okay, guys, prepare to rob the stage. Hold up there. Not likely. Roll along, covered wagon. Tarnation, it wasn't masks we needed, it was earplugs. Mr. Fargo is right, Dan's voice is worth a dozen shotguns. On the trail of the lonesome pineapple. Dan keeps right on practicing. Oh, I come from Cactusville with my banjo on my knee. Plinkety plunk. Hop. Strangely detailed wagon driver. Shucks, the middle-aged brothers are robbing that wagon. Hand over your gold. Just what I need. Give it a good shake. Zzz. Pang, buzz, buzz. How's that for service? Howl, head for the nearest water hole. Zzz, sting, ooh ya, buzz, howl. Gee, Willerkins, it's Molly Martin, the country and western star. Name your reward, Dan. Oh, shucks, Miss Molly. I'd like to sing on your show. Look at that horse. <laughs> Look at that horse. <laughs> Look at that horse. There's now a new star who's definitely on his way up. Sure hope I get I go down well. Desperate day in the Cactusville Nightingale. Stomp. But the floorboards are rotten. Jay, oh, what happened to this? Uh... Uh, I don't think the scan's supposed to look like this. We'll go with it, though. <laughs> but the floorboards are rotten. <laughs> Gee, Willikens, Dan Shaw went down well. Does this mean my career is over, Molly? Try again, Dan, but it's time on tippy toes. It's desperate day in the prairie thrush. <laughs> Tiptoe through the cactus. Tip toe. But Dan trips. Oops, sorry, Molly. Boomph. Big ox. Uh, can I have my hat back, please? Glare. Now the mic is too high. I'll just adjust the mic stand. That's mighty fine. You're my cow pie when I'm hungry! Stomp! Thump! These people are aghast at what they're seeing. Yeah, she looks better without the wig. She looks like Tank Girl without the wig. Beneath the stage... Time we got out of this joint! Say this is these disgusting worms. Hold up here, fellas! Yep, yahoo! Son of a gun, I'm getting a standing ovation, says weirdly detailed and wrinkled Desperate Dan. Reckon it's high time I made a record. The public loves my voice. Recording agent, enter! I'll offer my services to some record agents. Sorry, Dan, you ain't good looking and you can't sing. Sonny Dan, I only want girl singers. You're not more than enough, Dan! Don't call us, we'll call you. He's devastated. Humph, now I'll never get a hit record. Shocks, I'll make my own hit record! Record your own disc! S he has smashed this man to death behind the door. In the studio... I'm gonna sing a little song I wrote to myself. Let it roll, Dan! We're recording now! Says this guy who looks like the depiction of the Beano artist whenever he showed up in Biffo the Bear. Home, our peaceful prairie home! F 
foam foot. Oh, he has deafened this man. Silence. Oh no, this has happened. Sorry, Dan, your disc melted. <laughs> Sound 10, deafening. Bah, that was hopeless. The recording machine kept breaking down. Talent contest today. Hot diggity, this is my chance to make it the big time. Please, I thought for a second that said, please bring your own toilet. I'm gonna be a star at last! Alvin Plunk and the Blue Grass Stompers blow a fuse. Zeke as a parrot, bird imitator, has a sore throat. Crouch! Who's next on stage? Rain in the face, the Indian dancer. Oh no. What dance is that? It's, um, rain dance. And it works. Blub! Cancel the talent contest! Splut! Bah, that talent contest was a complete washout! Darn it, my strings have rusted up! Rusty twang! Little drop of bear grease! Disgusting. Just squeezing it right out of some sort of organ he has torn from the body of a freshly killed bear while it was still alive. Mighty sweet! Plunky! Plinky plonk! Plink! Dan meets Jeremiah Juggalug and his jug band. Pom! Pom pom! I could do that! Here's a real tough metal jug, Dan! Puff! Creak! Blam! Consonant! I'll never get in the band now! Why don't you try yodeling, Dan? I'll just do that. Better not practice too close to civilization. Yodely! Oh, the Tunguska explosion was actually desperate, Dan. Meanwhile, in the Alps, in Switzerland, it's amazing how sound carries in this clear mountain air. Yodely! You can say that again, partner. The ladies of the Quietness Society don't like Dan's yodeling. Ban Dan! No more yodeling! Ban Dan! Down! Get lost! Ban noise! So, out in the woods. Oh, the artist has, is trying out a new rendering texture here for the sky. A new cross-hatching technique. Nobody loves my old banjo! I should change his name to Desolate Dan! I'm not gonna give up my singing career! Just when you think it's over, it keeps going. Singer for hire, have banjo will travel. Sitting alone in blue! Plunk. <laughs> Dan's practicing. He is killing all the animals. Over at Smoky Bacon's hog farm. And I'll be hog tight. What's carrying them the porkers? Tarnation, how can I keep these wolves away from my hogs? Dan, I want to hire yo to do a bit o singing. Sure thing, Smoky. Be at Wolver Hollow at sundown! Nobody's turned up for my concert. I'll just get in some singing practice. Hey, pal, sounds as if the rest of the pack have found grub in Wolver Hollow. Let's go! Woohoo! Howl! Eat up, hogs, it's safe now. This is what pigs look like. They have. they have human noses. <laughs> They have human noses. This one kind of has a dog's nose. Later, it's still going. I won't give up my search for stardom. 
Cactusville Rock and Pop Awards Town Hall today. Shucks, wonder if I'll get a mention. I must be in with a great chance of the Best Newcomer Award. The award be awards begin. Best Male Singer, Waylon Jennings. Best Female Singer, Molly Martin. Soon be Martin! Best singing horse, Bronco Lane. Best singing dog, El Satyam. And now a special category created specially for Desperate Dan. Oh, shucks. Oh, this guy. This guy looks like he's from a different comic. This guy looks like Bruce Campbell. The wooden banjo for the worst singer in the West. Oh! Huh! What do they know about country music? <sighs> the Dan in the Moon! The Semolina Moon keeps shining! I think Dan's a mighty fine singer. I oh, hate sad endings, don't you? 1983, this one's from. I think this might be the end of it. Oh, no! Oh, oh, we got this to look forward to next time! We got this to look forward to next time! Ah! There we go. Back to this game. That was pretty good. Desperate Dan is absolutely unhinged. He is ultimate. 70 bits, oh boy. 70 bits, oh boy.